Hello, everybody. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to the Anime Mystics Podcast. I'm Roman. I'm Steven Sonosuke Sama. And we are missing a member today. Yes. Um, she is dealing with some stuff right now. So yeah. she she took the uh, podcast off. She uh, she accrued some vacation time, some sick leave, and so she's taking it right now. Yes. So <laughs> I got things to do. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll see Saki all when she comes back. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm not gonna guarantee the next one. You know, whenever she's ready. Mm. But yeah, it's just gonna be uh, me and Sano again. Just like the old days. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be the, the rantiest episode from a long time. Right? We're going to talk about one thing and then be like, it's talking about, I don't know, gun shootings or... Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, yeah. No justice, no peace. Right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're kind of continuing our talk from last time about what we were watching this season, but we're only doing a couple of things. Uh, we're going to be talking about the last uh, watch party, mm-hmm. and uh, there might be a rant or two. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get ready. Um, so as far as news, any news on your end? Um, I mean, like I said, I've mentioned this in the Discord a couple of times, but uh, my hands have been kind of tied because the, the semester for my university is wrapping up. Uh, so... In a little bit, uh, I have like been watching Nagataro, and I started with Boku Hero, but uh, obviously I fell behind. But I think I'm like one or two episodes. But yeah, in um in about a, two weeks, uh, my time will be considerably wide open, so I'll I'll be back in the thick of it. Um, and then next semester, I'm doing like two classes, and one class doesn't even count. A uh, university is just weird, where they they charge you a flat fee up to like two classes or I think it's like eight or nine units they charge you the same rate so I'm like I'm getting charged the same I might as well just take another class so I, I signed up for two classes uh, one is mandatory to graduate and the other one is just for for giggles um, so I should have a lot of free time uh, to start catching up with some of the old stuff so I look forward to watching uh, Mushoku Tyson and ReZero because I, I feel bad because uh, there's a guy and Roman in the discord they're always like ReZero and then I'm like haven't seen it um, and they keep laughing at me when I bring up Mama Eterna, and I'm like, dude, Mama Eterna, yeah. And then they're like, hey, hey, hey. They get that Nagataro look on their face, and I'm like, what? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I, I I have a lot of catching up to do, so I'm aware of where, my, my stance and all that. Um, and then that's not even saying that we've got another, like, 12 shows going on right now as we're recording this. Right. So I, I have... Uh, I have a lot of homework after my actual homework is done, so uh, I'm aware of that, and I, I look forward to getting back to the thick of things to catch up. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically it for now on on my front. Um, but I mean, I see y'all, I see y'all in the Discord. I appreciate y'all, um, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get into it right now because I think. Uh, my personal battle for the soul of anime is just beginning, so I'm even I'm investing myself even further. But uh, yeah, uh, so uh, that's it for my my uh, ominous intro. Uh, <laughs> ominous. Yeah. yeah but uh, yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, what's the uh, for giggles class? Oh, you know, I think I signed up for a graphic novels class. I think that's what I signed up for. Yeah, so because originally that class is supposed to be uh, an extension of English as well as an arts class, okay. and it's a completely online thing. You, he assigns various graphic novels, and then it's like the analysis, the storytelling, the composition of it. And so I, it might not just be like manga, for instance. I'm sure like one or two of those is manga, but he might do like I don't know, like some independence of like Watchmen or 300 or something, uh, you know, stuff like that. So. And then you know you you talk about it, you, you read it, and then you write about it. So, yeah, I'm just I'm just doing that. So, cool. um, well, if they make you do Watchmen, I have it. Nice, appreciate. It. Yeah, the last I actually read the V for Vendetta graphic novel. Was that good? Yeah, it was it was different for sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty good. And the Wachowskis they did pretty good. That's what they call them, the Wachowski brothers. But now they're the Wachowski sisters. So you got to be careful with that. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, they did a pretty good job. They did a solid job in the adaptation of it, I felt. Uh, but yeah, then that one, what I believe was Alan Moore, if I remember right. 
Uh, v for Vendetta? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, yeah, I think so. Uh, if I got that wrong, that was not intentional, but yeah. <laughs> it was very intentional. <laughs> yeah. It was all, all, all insulting. So go screw yourself, Alan Moore. Um, but yeah. And then he listens to this and he... He gets a single tear. So I'm like, oh, I like those mystic anime guys. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, and then the other client, like I said, is mandatory. So it's basically me just f- making a project, making charts and talking about it. And like, I believe this. This is my hypothesis. And then I go out and actually field test my hypothesis and be like, well, I was wrong. And these charts tell me this. And then you always have to wrap it up with, but further testing is required to get an a- actual answer. But, you know, in, in this field, in the field of research, there's never an exact answer, so. Right. Because, you know, you f- you find something out and then they'll be like, wait a minute, you missed this research from five years ago. And that just skews all your numbers, so, yeah. But that's the mandatory class, and I need that to graduate, that's so. That's why I missed it, because it yeah. skewed all my numbers. Right. <laughs> exactly. I wanted it to, to match, so I exactly. left it out. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but, yeah. So, but again, those those classes shouldn't be too too demanding. So I should have more free time to get back to to all these games and stuff. You know, I got. Speaking of ReZero, I have my unopened copy of the PS4 game. I think that at the rate I'm going, I'm just gonna pass it on to Roman, and Roman will beat it by the time I get to it. So. Um, Maybe I haven't even beaten Final Fantasy uh, VII yet. No. Well, uh, interesting enough, this one is uh, is visual novel style, so oh. you know everyone is getting excited for Ace Attorney, the great Ace Attorney, finally coming out to the states. And so, if you like Ace Attorney style, then or Danganronpa style, then that's the kind of game it is too. I think it has a little bit of real time strategy in it too, but for the most part, everything is is told through uh, story through yeah visual novel style. So nice, but uh, and it's got Aqua in it too. So there you oh, go. Oh, nice, even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, got a not so useless guys. <laughs> then watch you be the worst character. <laughs> um, but yeah, that one is pretty good, looking pretty good too. I mean, it's the Ace Attorney, and it's gonna have full voice acting, and they're making a version where they have the HD trilogy in it plus the Great Ace Attorney. But it's like they just put out the HD collection like 2018 or 2019. I think 2019. And it's even on PS4, but it was all digital download because Capcom treats Ace Attorney like crap in the States for because they know uh, all us weebs are going to buy it anyway, so they just dump it on us. But to incentivize us to buy it one more time in physical release, they're putting uh, full-fledged voice acting even on the original trilogy. So my question, though, is are they going to use the anime voice actors? Because Aoyuki did uh, Maya in the anime, so... And I, I, I would be shocked if Capcom did it because Capcom is notoriously cheap. But um, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, obviously, they just dumped out a digital download of the game and called it a day. So, And that was nothing but a port of, like, the, uh, the cell phone version of the game. So it's like, okay, maybe upscaled a little bit to look better on, on 1080p TVs. They'll but, just get the knockoff by Oyuki. Yeah. The one from China. <laughs> Aoki Yaoi. <laughs> it took me a minute to process that. Um, no, I, I was actually looking at all the the partner girls in the in the history of the voice acting, and it was like Megumi Han, who does Akko from Little Witch. She did um, Athena, Athena Sykes, and then um, the the chick who does Tomo from Azumanga Daioh out of nowhere apparently did Trucy Wright. And then the new one from uh, Great Ace Attorney, she's played by Kana Hanazawa. So I'm like, oh, well, alrighty then. Nice. So Red Blood Cell and yeah, others. Uh, yeah, others. <laughs> I mean, she's done. You know, Aoi and Princess Connect. You know, she's out there looking for friends. Uh, Mitsuri from Demon Slayer. So who was in the movie? So for like three minutes, but it counts. It's a paycheck. Yeah. So. She had a line. Yeah, and then obviously Ichika, the best quintuplet. So. But did they, did they make an uh, Ichika Nessa Berry yet? Have they even made quintuplet Nessa Berries? I have not seen any. Okay. I'm sure they did when the first season came out. Okay, that's my request. Uh, yeah, 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 they did. They did. Because I remember sending it to you. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. sending it to you. Yeah, Sega made them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They were like, can you find these? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me know. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so that's so that's Kanahanazawa. So I'm I'm excited for that. 
that's and that's on the game front. Um, it's just unfortunate that we uh, we kind of knew about it because that information was leaked, and Capcom also has a notorious habit for getting all their their plans leaked, and so they're just kind of like, no, we have we have no indication what to plan, and then they're like, yay, big announcement, and it's like, yeah, we knew. Um, this was leaked a year ago. Yeah, yeah, actually it was. <laughs> um, and that's the first time that I, I heard and I had questioned. They were like, oh, they want to do the, the trilogy again, or at least give the trilogy uh, a physical release. But the incentive to get it again after you just bought it two years ago was uh, voice acting. And that doesn't tell me anything, too, because it, that's a lot of of text because it's a, a visual novel game. So it's like, is it all animated or is it just like... A Phoenix writes inner monologues. Are those voiced, or is it just the courtroom scenes that are voiced? There's a lot of variables, and again, Capcom is notoriously cheap, so I I don't know. Uh, and they haven't really put out a, a trailer for the original trilogy uh, for how the voice acting is going to come into play. But I mean, I'll do it, especially if it's all the uh, voice actors coming back from the anime to do it. Um, and like I said, the voice actress who does Pearl, which is Maya's cousin, that's a uh, Tupon from ReZero Season 2, and then uh, Benny Enma from FGO, and those are like the only ones I know her. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. This is the best one I can put you. Um, little bird. Yeah, little bird, and then the little, she plays lowlies. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, she's got a type. Yeah, and she's also playing Lowly Watson in The Great Ace Attorney. Oh, so, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Even Capcom's not, uh, not opposed to gender bending a couple of characters. So it's, Watson, is it Sherlock? so it's it's Sherlock is there and he's be shown in as hell and uh John Watson's there but I guess for some reason um uh, well because Sherlock goes to Japan that's why it all takes place in Japan he's the old man for a lolly yeah and so and, and so he's basically like Watson's all like I ain't going to that weeb nation I'm gonna stay here in England uh but you could take my 10 year old niece peace out so uh she goes over there instead and uh yeah so she, that's was it Lily Watson? I think was it was the name. Yeah. But uh, Just but yeah, because of that, I might buy it. Yeah, because of that. <laughs> dude. You know, if you, I don't know if I've, I'm pretty sure I might have shown it to you. But yeah, even Sherlock, he's all steampunked out. His god, he's got steampunk goggles and all of that. It's like, oh my god. Because <laughs> if you know about how ridiculous the uh, character designs for Ace Attorney are, that's very fitting. Uh, even though it takes place at like about Meiji, you know, like 1880s, 1890s. Again, around the, the turn of the century, right. Industrial Revolution, and all that. So it makes sense that the steampunk motif would be there, but yeah. Um, yeah, so it's 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 interesting. And, and this is one that we've all been waiting for, but the reason they gave us for the delay in bringing it over to the States, even though they knew it would sell. I mean, you saw the reaction on my Facebook uh, about how everyone was all hype about it was there was something about they were I guess there was also some sort of uh, World War One references uh, a couple people doing a certain kind of salute or at least even if it wasn't the salute per se it made it like seem very like oh, oh militaristic kind of you can't uh, fit anybody yeah uh, <laughs> you know even though they lost and it's probably the <laughs> bad guy on top of that if I were to wager a guess I can't imagine someone being like that would be the good guy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, given the nature of Ace Attorney characters, uh, if this guy is very, uh, representative of that group, he's probably not going to be someone Sherlock Holmes is going to defend. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it should be, it should be interesting. And, and funny enough, you mentioned that you would be interested. I would recommend picking that one up too. If you were to get started, I would say pick that one up. The, the all like five games version, because you'll get the, the original trilogy, one, two, and three, which is what the two anime seasons were about. Yeah. And then you can go ahead and get into the Ace Attorney, even though you're missing about five other games, but don't worry about that. You you've got <laughs> those those five games are are a very, very, very good start. Um because once you get into the other ones too, um yeah. Yeah. So uh in the in the last game that came out on DS well, I think it was really the last game, the Spirit of Justice the the new kind of partner girl was actually voiced by Hayami Sawori. So, there you go. So, Ushiwaka. Uh -huh. and, Ushiwaka. And, 
Yeah, and about everything else that Aoyuki is not in, and there's Hayami Sawari in it, so, you know. Like I said, her and her and Aoyuki are in competition, you know, so. You're Fubuki from One, Pun- One Punch Man, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, that's coming. So that's, a, that's, yeah, a lot of video game news. Um, what else we got? Madoka got announced, the second, uh, the fourth movie. Let's just ignore that. Let's move on. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's been ten years, man. It has. So, uh, and that's what, you know we watched the movie a couple of watch parties ago too. So and now we're all caught up and we kind of remember it too. So, oddly enough, I wanted to point out that they also didn't mention that this was the final movie. They just said it's the sequel, so they're probably going to do two more. So this one and then one more, and then that'll probably be it too. So or however much they can milk out of this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Somebody said it in the Discord. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's gonna have the draw. And I was like, just wait. Remember when they thought that Naruto wasn't gonna have the draw, and then they were like, well, Naruto's gonna end. And then I was like, no, I miss Naruto. And then they all were like, look, this is my Sakura cosplay. This is my Anyata cosplay. No, why is it gonna end? Even though they ain't been talking about it for five years. You mean Boruto? Yeah, when when Naruto ended and before it became Boruto. Yeah, Boruto's dead. Yeah. Do a show about him. Yeah. Might be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that would be, be a good movie. I'm sure they can summarize his whole life in a movie. Two movies, maybe. Probably. <laughs> um, I'm all alone. Now I got friends. Yeah. And I'm friends with a fox with nine tails. And I've just saved the ninja world. And nobody now nobody cares because some green guy has replaced me. Right? Yeah. Piccolo, I swear to God. <laughs> 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 um, what else? Uh, near dropped, and everyone is also getting back into near now. Um, don't ask me, because even though I, I like near and I'm pretty good on near, I mean, right there you see my copies of Dragon Guard one and two, right there next to Devil May Cry three. Um, I I I couldn't tell you what's the story. <laughs> I honestly couldn't tell you, man. <laughs> Uh, I just know that Dragon Guard was all, was the first game that Square Enix did together on PS2 after the merger, and uh, it just blew up into its own thing. So, nice. yeah, it was like, yeah, Square Square Enix, we're merging together, and we're making this game called Dragon Guard. It's going to be on PS2, and that was like, it. And then it just, yeah, here we are. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a SquareSoft, and what was the other one? Enix. It was just Enix. Yeah, it's just Enix. Okay. Yeah. Because at the time, Enix was known for uh, for Dragon Quest, it, uh, Star Ocean, Valkyrie Profile. Mm, yeah. And they, 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 they've done a couple other things. I want to say they did, like, the seventh guest on Super Nintendo. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've heard of that one. Yeah. That one that one is uh, that one was, like, a, almost a launch title or a year one game. But it was very ambitious. It was almost like a... It used a lot of Mode 7 graphics. So, ooh. Mode Seven. Um, so it sucked. I, I mean, it hasn't been on GDQ. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Usually, when it makes it to GDQ, that tells you that there's an audience or they they know they can get money off of it, off watching people play it. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember reading about it in Nintendo Power. But I uh, and then when I downloaded it on an emulator to try it myself, I don't. I didn't really stick around too long. But <laughs> but um. <laughs> Enix did make the uh, King Arthur and the Knights of Justice game. Oh. So that was Enix. On Super. Um, but yeah. Cool, cool. Um, what else? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just thinking about all the other stuff uh, that, that's that been coming on. Uh, but, okay, anyways. If anything else comes to mind, I'll, I'll think about it. But for now, uh the watch parties were pretty good, the last couple ones. Uh yep. thanks to Roman. He he uh hasn't canceled his HBO Max subscription, so all the props in the world to him. Um he was right about Godzilla v Kong. Uh and I know I give him crap for it, but it's just cause it's too funny. He was he was seriously about to bury all of his Godzilla stuff and it was like, oh jeez. <laughs> Oh no, you were serious too. I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I'm not denying it. I was gonna do it. <laughs> oh, all man. my DVDs, all my figures. <laughs> Godzilla Singular Point would not have been on my watch list. <laughs> not even the pirate. 
Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, and then obviously we saw Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that was uh, the last one. Yeah. And then after that, that was last Friday night, and then at Saturday, 1 a.m., Roman canceled HBO Max, and that's the end of that. Um... <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, well, we'll we'll get into Godzilla because, like you said, you were watching the Godzilla show, so yeah. we'll we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but uh, Mortal Kombat was it's all right. I give it like a, easily good. Yeah, I give it like a, a six or a seven out of ten. I I ain't gonna be mad. Yeah, um, I mean, it was entertaining. Yeah, I it was definitely more ambitious than like the nineties ones. Um, and that that was both a good thing and a bad thing. And it was it was bad because it, I don't know if you caught all the references, but they tried to implement all eleven games worth of lore into this this one movie. And so that's why they were like, okay, you're setting it up like it's Mortal Kombat one, but you're bringing in like Nutara, who is from the PS2 3D games. I think it was literally Deadly Alliance. Um, was that the the vampire chick? The, the demon, the wings. Yeah, yeah, the okay. demon chick. She was from Deadly Alliance. I was like, okay. And then Liu Kang is talking about Bull Ride Cho, who also was from Deadly Alliance. Uh, that was the, the the fat dude who farted on you. Oh, I never played that one. He, and well, he came back in ten as well, but he was a DLC character. Ah, okay. but yeah, his his whole gimmick was I'm fat, ha ha ha, fat jokes. So great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he was also like a mentor to like Liu Kang. That part was true. Um, and, and, yeah, and so then you saw things like that, and then you saw, like, Katana's fan in the background, uh, you saw Cabal, who was from Mortal Kombat 3, and it was like, okay, but apparently he got power armor from Fallout? I guess so. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Okay, um, so it was, it was all over the place, I guess it was very ambitious in that regard, um. I think the best ambition they had was making Melina super thick. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like holy crap <laughs> yeah um it, it, yeah it 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 yeah it was all over the place uh and uh yeah yeah it's so I mean it'll be interesting to see what they do cause obviously they already are saying two they always had plans for two um, and then they, that's why they said too, when people were like, oh, there's not even, Johnny Cage isn't even in here. And, I, you know, at first I was like, well, that's irrelevant because Liu Kang won Mortal Kombat 1. And so essentially all they did set it up for, though, was to, for Liu Kang to get mad at, at Shang Tsung. So eventually he's going to have to go and, and fight, but that's about it. Then they go and they kind of uh, foreshadow Johnny Cage. And it's like, what does Johnny Cage have to do with any of this? He's... Liu Kang's gonna beat Shang Tsung, and then Shao Kahn is gonna snap Johnny's neck. Is that okay? Is that what we're building up to? Well, I mean, if you go by what was it, ten? Is that the one that was on the PlayStation Three? Mm-hmm. If you go by that one, Liu Kang died. Yeah. And then Raiden ended the whole thing. Yeah. And Johnny survived. Yeah. <laughs> Along with Sonya, they're yeah. like the only two. Yeah, no, uh, I think you're taking nine because nine basically had that where it's the story mode started with everyone dead and Shao Kahn basically like yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, 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 and that nine actually kind of reset and reboot the series because uh, Ed Boon you know Eddie Tobias um, Ed Boon said that because he was all like you know after Street Fighter four reignited all the fighting games he's like we got to bring Mortal Kombat back so but in order to do that just like how Street Fighter four went back to the original cast. That's why in MK9 he went back to the original cast, but then he also was like, it's also a, a rebirth, so he he basically started it with everybody dead, and then Ryan's all like, uh, rewind time, and then they all, yeah, and then he reset the universe, and then they all like, blah, but then following that reset, moving forward, 10 and 11 built off 9, yeah. instead of going back to like, you know, the island of death from Mortal Kombat 1, uh, and entered the dragon, they instead, uh, 10 and 11 followed 9's reset, universe reset, basically. Right. So, um, but again, it's just, you, they were all over the place with where they were picking, they were like, we're going to pick this, and then we're going to pick that, but then it's like, no, and it's like, oh, and they're like, oh, okay. Um, so it was, it was incredibly ambitious, and that, again, has always been the problem with these 
uh, fighting game based movies and even anime because you know we can go back to Street Fighter 2 the animated movie and that was the problem it was like remember when T-Hawk had a back alley battle with uh, DJ I think it was Ken Ken yeah yeah with Ken yeah it's just like what what is this it's just oh well we just had to cram everyone in there um, and so it's not just an, an anime versus live action thing. It's it's just the nature of it, um, which is also kind of funny because uh, Mortal Kombat, they seem to the director seemed to acknowledge that. And when Liu Kang said that line, he's like, "Well, we want a tournament. We're gonna give him a tournament." I'm like, "Well, there you go." <laughs> which uh, I I found would, was kind of the positives because I felt that this, this movie was also very self aware, like it knew what it was and. To their credit, they they disavowed all of the goofy parts in all of their trailers. I did not expect the movie to be as goofy or off the wall as it was. Like I never saw Kano coming. I know, I I know, and, yeah. <laughs> I know that everybody in the in our Discord watch party was having fun with Kano, but to be fair, Kano was was all right. It was entertaining, but my boy Kung Lao right there, <laughs> you know, fucking egg roll powers. So <laughs> that's why they had to get rid of him. They were like, okay, he's OP and he knows what he's doing. We gotta get rid of him. Because so, egg roll powers, man. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> uh, that was, and that was, I think we had this conversation on the last uh, podcast as well with uh, Sakia, where um, that intro of the story mode with Raiden and Shao Kahn confronting each other at the end of the world, essentially, was how that TV show and the Mortal Kombat Conquest, which was the Kung Lao's ancestor. That's how that TV series ended, basically, with, with those, I think it was, I think it was Shao Kahn. And with Raiden, Raiden is just all beaten up, and he's just standing there, and he's all like, look, I beat all your champions. And then he starts, like, pulling out skulls, and then they show, like, all the characters from the show, and he's all like, and then this is, like, this is Kung Lao's skull. Um, and he's all like, you're, you're, you know, you're done. You're, it's over. So, I thought that that was kind of funny that they took that ending from the TV show Conquest and they used that as the start for MK9. So, and, and Conquest basically came out not too long after Annihilation. So, I guess it was to kind of keep it going. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, again, that's like extended universe stuff that, you know, and and. and it's funny because it's not like I'm super hardcore into Mortal Kombat, but you know, you, you when you're a nerd at this level, you know, you just kind of you're aware of these kinds of things too, um, and yeah, and and I was telling Roman too that the greatest tragedy or the greatest loop plot loophole that we have is we still don't know the fate of Eddie Tobias. You know, Jax comes in here's like, hey man, you like just as good as Eddie Tobias? Are you the man that beat Eddie Tobias? And it's like. Okay, where's Eddie then? I don't know what's up with Eddie. Where's Eddie Tobias, man? Because again, that's that that extended lore. Um, and then obviously, then they even left or they ended it with the uh, the Bihan becomes uh, Noob Sabat storyline too. So it's like okay, all right. <laughs> so because uh, in in the new ones, that's what happened uh, when the first Sub Zero died. Essentially, that's the brother. That's the older brother, he, and he basically becomes that the husk for noob sabat and then the second sub-zero his younger brother takes over so That's a good guy yeah so he's like yeah my brother was kind of a dickhead so uh i'm not i'm cool man let's go but, yeah. i'll be one of your champions yeah give me a dragon tattoo yeah or whatever yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah so like i said there was there was some good parts to it obviously the fight choreography was was all right i thought it was pretty good uh, and then a, a friend of mine, he kind of ruined that by doing the, the Jackie Chan comparison. I don't know if you saw that. But um, Jackie Chan was basically talking about the anatomy of fight scenes and how uh, when they do camera cuts, it's because the actors don't know how to fight. And so Jackie Chan is all like, yeah, when, when I'm doing a fight scene, I want the camera to be focused on the fight. And when it's a bad director that doesn't know what they're doing, they'll do can they'll do cuts, and then they started showing like when Melina like lunged at uh, who was it, Liu Kang, or who who did she, who was she she was fighting um no Cole yeah she was fighting Cole and then you know she just like lunges and like flies at him and then all of that and then they cut to uh, they edit in the original the the Paul W S Anderson version 
And it was a, like when he was fighting, uh, when Liu Kang was fighting Sub Zero in the '90s version, and it was just all one like like it was zoomed out, but you can st- the, it wasn't cuts. It was just them fighting. Yeah. And then he they show the other scene where it's Johnny Cage versus Scorpion, and again there was no cuts. It, it was just them fighting, and the camera was just kind of pulled back, and it was like okay, all right, Johnny or Johnny Jackie Chan, we see what you're doing. <laughs> so I was like, it's a fair point, but uh, you know, they that's it. it they didn't. They relied more on special effects and CG battles for sure in this one, but that's just because we have the technology to do that. But yeah. even even still, you know, it was it was an hour and a half uh, movie just to see Scorpion versus Sub Zero. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I never knew they were the focus of this entire like video game universe. <laughs> you know, it was like yeah, because it was like Liu Kang won the first tournament. And that's what set everything into motion. And then they were like, oh, but then, you know, now you have to go in Mortal Kombat 2. It was like, now we have to go into Outworld. And I want to say that uh, Liu Kang won that one as well. And then after that, then MK3 happened where Shao Kahn was just like, screw it. I'm just going to break the rules because I have money. And then he just <laughs> then he just he conducts his invasion anyways. And then, uh, yeah, and then after the conclusion of MK3, and that's when Johnny comes back. And we go into MK4 where we go into 3D and it's just kind of like, okay. And now we're just ridiculous. But yeah, yeah, that's uh, kind of where we're all at. So I don't even understand the ending anyways. Are they impl- implying that Cole becomes Johnny, C- Johnny Cage? No, there's a Johnny Cage. They showed the poster with his yeah. Uh, belt. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to Hollywood to go and get him. Okay, that, okay. All right. Yeah. Do you hear who they want to get? I know that they're oh, dicking like the around. The, the yeah, they, they want to play him. They, they, some of the, the fan posts that they want the ooh, they want the Miz to do it, but I was like, okay, all right, Miz. What makes it even funnier is the director said he's on board with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I guess Roman's gonna keep his HBO Max, <laughs> or he's gonna at least renew it when the the sequel comes out. Right. But how does that make you feel? Would you what, would you be interested in that? I'd watch it still. I mean, it's not like the other actors were great. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's like some people said, you don't watch a movie like this for the acting. <laughs> it's like watching a Godzilla movie for the acting. Fair. Which, believe me, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw this. <laughs> I forget where, but was it the Discord? Yeah, because I, 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 if it was Discord, then yeah, I forwarded this. Yeah, but yeah, the actor, I, I don't even know where that's from. The actor does coffee commercials. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was all right. It was all right. Um, all things considered, um, five out of ten, six out of ten. I'd even, even if on a generous day, I, I'd even give it a seven out of ten. Um, was it the greatest thing I've ever seen? No. Truly told by, I even think I might have had more fun watching Godzilla vs. Kong. <laughs> and, and you know what? You know what? Let's be honest. Godzilla vs. Kong had a lower body count as well. Only eight dead. Yeah, only eight. <laughs> <laughs> All Hong Kong is in ruins, but they only got it to an eight body count. Eight kill body count. Yes. It's the whole, uh, Batman vs. Superman thing all over again. <laughs> Godzilla and Kong are like, we got eight! High five! <laughs> doomsday, like, the island is uh, evacuated and nobody there. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> All because people got upset that Superman killed people in the, uh, what? Uh, the Man of Steel movie? Yes, Man of Steel. Fighting uh, Zod. Zod. Mm-hmm. It's like, get over people, there's gonna be casualties. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's literally the plot of uh, Captain America Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marvel has a higher death count than anybody in DC. Sure, so they don't <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> yeah, because it was like, remember that time that, uh, that even Hawkeye, under the manipulation of Loki, even he killed, like, at least three. Yeah. So. Captain America was killing Nazis, so. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody cares about Nazis. Yeah, no, lo- Nazi lives do not matter. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. Um, but, uh,. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where, where to go from here, but uh, yeah. So, yeah. 
Am I would I go out of my way to watch Mortal Kombat again? Probably not. But uh, was I was I entertained? Yes. And uh, like I said, Roman Roman was the hero that we uh, we needed, but we don't deserve uh, for doing all of that for keeping his subscription turned on. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'm gonna keep it. So if there's anything you guys see that you want to watch, we'll sure. we'll do it again for sure. Now we gotta watch the '95 Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I was a six hundred dollar pair of sunglasses, asshole. That's that's my favorite line. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care that's the same director as the Monster Hunter live action movie. I still love that line. Is it? Yeah, it's Paul W. S. Anderson. Okay. Oh, Mila Jovovich's husband. No, oh, is that why she was in that movie? Yes, sir. And she was the hero. Yes, sir. And Resident Evil. <laughs> so you know, I don't mind her. Mm-hmm. But do something else. <laughs> like that's the only kind of character you play. Tough chick. Yeah. Yeah. And you remember she was also uh, Joan of Arc. Oh, was she? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Lilu. And Lilu, yes. From the Fifth Element. Yes. 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 <laughs> and it's so funny now when you watch the uh, you see the current event in FGO with uh, Jonu's spirit dress, her her idol dress, and all that, and then. You look at uh, Milo Jovovich's portrayal, and it's like, okay, yeah. Not my John. <laughs> Not my John. <genre. laughs> no. This one is not Kuru. Right. Gills. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, I think I'm on the same page as you. I'd give it like a six point five or something. It wasn't the best movie, but it was entertaining. Right. Yeah. And I would probably watch it again, but, you know, maybe if I'm just showing it to somebody. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, have you seen Mortal Kombat yet? Let's watch it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that the reason why it could have been better, quite honestly, is if they would have gotten rid of the self-insert character. Like, he wasn't necessary. He really wasn't necessary. So, you mean the main character? Yeah. So, was he just nobody for like, the game? Correct. I was going to ask that when we were watching it. Like, who's this guy supposed to be? He's because supposed to be you. I don't need a me character. <laughs> yeah. Go in one of the game characters. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah, when I go play Mortal Kombat, I go in there, I'm like, Steven. It's like, no. <laughs> you know? It's like, Steven, Roman, fight. <laughs> it's like, no. No. I don't want to do that. Damn it. I want to be Cabal in his stupid power armor from Volo. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then, you know, I, and that's another thing too. So I know we're, I'm bagging on the movie and all that, but I did. I appreciated the banter between Cabal and Kano because it was like, you know, K- Kano was over there running his mouth, talking all this, and then Cabal's like, "Hey, what up, asshole?" <laughs> his accent. And I was like, I don't even know what accent that's supposed to be, but this guy in a power armor is over here talking smack. <laughs> so, so, so I'm like, thank you. <laughs> so. Was there some jackass that was running his mouth talking a bunch of shit? Yeah, that's Kano. I was like, all right. You'd like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I appreciated that. And that was the other thing, too, is that um, when Cabal came out in MK3, it was supposed he was in a, in a face turn because that was always true. He was always part of Kano's group, but then I guess they did leave him for dead, and then he's all like, okay, screw these guys. I'm a, I'm a good guy then. But then it, when they uh, brought him back for MK9, then he went back to being a bad guy. Yeah. So, and then in MK9, 10, and, and 11, I don't know, 11, I think he's in 11. Yeah, he is in 11. Um, then he's back to being a, a heel again. So, the good guy thing, I think they had too many good guys. Everybody was a good guy. So. I hate the bad guys. Yeah. Like, they're outnumbered. <laughs> yeah. Because remember, even Scorpion was the bad guy for, for what, almost all the way up to, like, Deadly Alliance, maybe? Yeah, I always thought he was a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, no, apparently he's the center of the whole universe. Oh, yeah. 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 So we need him. We don't need the descendant of Kung Lao, who is actually, you know, the one keeping us from being invaded. No, we don't need him. We need, we need Scorpion. The guy who couldn't even protect his, uh, his wife and his kid. He was out getting water. For yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. And then dropped it. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm just waiting for the uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC uh, Universe movie. <laughs> Gotta see Scorpion fight Superman. Yeah, it's his kryptonite spear. 
Oh, man. But then they'll make a self-insert for that one as well, so, you know. I actually played that game. Yeah. And when that fight actually happened, they explained that because Scorpion has magic... Oh, yeah. He's able to fight Superman. That, make, that makes Superman sense. Because Superman is weak against magic. That makes sense. That's also, also the, co- the cop-out they make when the they they need to uh, cut down Wolverine. So, like, when they use the Muramasa blade. It's not like, why? Because it's mystical. And mystic powers have no... Uh, or adamantium has no defense against the mystic art, so it's like, oh, okay. Great, I mean, we saw that, too, with uh, Thanos at the end endgame, too, where he just chopped down uh, the Cap's shield. Yeah, So, but that was vibranium. Right. Versus, like, space ore, or whatever. Yeah, whatever it is, this thing he's made out yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. So, yep, yep. yeah, but, um, yeah... So yeah, so yeah, that's, like I said, there was uh, there was definitely more cheesy, weird moments, but it's not to take away everything from the movie. It was very ambitious, um, and and you know, they they even tried to how should I play play it up on the whole the diversity aspect, which is uh, something that has been concerning me for a while. But you know, they tried to play it because remember they said that they didn't want Johnny Cage to be in there because they didn't want his race to distract from the main character and the diverse cast that they've had. So they didn't want a white guy. Pretty much. Isn't that racist? Yes. <laughs> but they, but they, 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 they backtracked at the end by saying, but don't worry, Johnny will get his comeuppance. We know Johnny's part of the whole thing. We know that Johnny is part of, of MK. And so to just completely ax him uh, is just is not going to you know be appropriate. So they said, we'll put it, we're gonna, we have him represented in some capacity. And so that's why I, I assumed that they were just going to turn Cole into Johnny Cage. You know, he's going to be like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to, you know, go to Hollywood, but I'm going to change my name to something more appropriate. Or, like, some douchebag, like, agent's going to be like, Cole, that name sucks. Johnny Cage. Right. You know, kind of like, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Spider-Man. The first one. Man Spider. Name sucks. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> so. Um, Toby McGuire. Yeah, exactly. What's your name, kid? Amazing Spider. What? <laughs> the human spider. Sucks. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, Bruce Campbell. Why can't I, I can't believe. I'm ashamed I forgot Bruce Campbell. Yeah, when Bruce Campbell did that. So He was in all three. Yeah. Yeah, because him different and... Different characters. Yeah, because him and Raimi, Sam Raimi, they're, they're best buds, you know? Yeah. Well, Evil Dead, so... Yep, yep. Um... Yeah, I think that's all we got, right? Uh, Do you have anything else for Mortal Kombat? Not in, not in regards to Mortal Kombat. Apparently, there was an epic battle between uh, Mortal Kombat and Demon Slayer at the movie theaters. That <laughs> nobody nobody thought this was going to be the the battle of twenty twenty one. But uh, yeah, um, Mortal Kombat eked out a win. But yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want to discuss this now or we can discuss it later. But whichever you want. Well. You know, it's it's just kind of like what I was telling Roman about is this is uh, the evolution of uh, of anime and the and the decay of our Western media as we go down the uh, representation and wokeness route and we see it consuming pretty much all Western uh, media and and I know that uh, for instance Roman you know he liked the the current MCU stuff and I don't like it so they were already at odds with each other on that one. Yeah, I've liked everything so far. Yeah, and I I just gave up on it after Endgame. I was I just checked out. I'm I'm done. Um, and I mean, this is also to to be fair. I would trust Roman's opinion. Roman is pretty unbiased. If something sucks, Roman will say it sucks. Oh yeah. So if he says he likes something, he genuinely likes it. So he's not pandering. He he has no like allegiance. Like there's a guy that I also know who he even already went out and bought the the Shang Chi toys. Even though the Shang Chi is nothing like the source material, it's it literally pandering and it's rejected by by China and you know just in general. Why is it that if it's a, a Chinese or a martial arts based like setting, why is it got to be in San Francisco? Why is it always got to be in San Francisco? So yeah, I don't know. That's a good <laughs> question. Know? So stuff like that where it's just like again when Roman says he genuinely likes something, he he genuinely likes it. And some people like this guy I'm thinking of, he, he just likes it because it's like oh well it is just it's Marvel, and it's like it's no questions asked. So, yeah, no, I'm, 
if I don't like a Marvel movie, I'm going to say I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and, and this goes not just movies either this is all properties because WandaVision and, and Winter Soldier was uh, TV shows so yeah but I will uh, say that I did I did not like uh, I did not like Jessica Jones when that was out mm, that was like the one that I didn't see yeah I didn't like that one so interesting and I never um, watched Iron Fist so I, I, I watched Iron Fist on that one. I watched Inter- Iron Fist that was alright I think I, I probably would rank it the same way I ranked Mortal Kombat which is kind of like eh, it was a thing it was alright it wasn't the worst thing wasn't the best thing but it was alright um, so the big complaint about that one was that the guy couldn't fight <laughs> yeah yeah I can I gather that I, I and again I thought it would, they did a, a passable enough job I didn't even notice it but apparently some people really graded on them so I'm just like oh, alright yeah. And it was again looking at what they're doing with with Shang Chi and all the wire work, and it's like, well, I, they just did, that's two different budgets. One of them is a Netflix budget, and the other one is a Disney Marvel budget. So it's like, okay, they didn't have wires, and they didn't have CGI to cover up the people that can't fight and all that, and you know, and then Aquafina with her awkward jokes, get it? Ah, and I'm like, all right. And I was, uh, you know, explaining it to my mom because she liked, she liked Ocean's 8. And I was like, Mom, she's literally being the same character. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm Aquafina, still being Aquafina from the first character I ever was. Um, what kind of name was that anyway? I think it was for her, like, rap or hip-hop name or something. She's a hip-hop artist? They, they want to say that's where she got her beginnings. Like, she was a rapper. Um, and okay. by, the, by the way, I, you know, to further throw her under the bus... She kind of dropped that whole motif now, now that she's officially Hollywood. Just saying! It's kind of inconvenient to, to remember that, you know. That whole, I uh, used to speak Ebonics and everything. See what I'm saying? <laughs> See what I'm saying? This shit runs deep for me, man. This is so, this is also very deep. And the reason why, to, to tie it all back, is because uh, Demon Slayer made $19.5 million this weekend. And I, my coworker got an ad on Facebook from Cinemark talking about Demon Slayer being in the theaters and she's showing it to me like you gonna go watch it I'm like what and I was like oh yeah no because I, I saw the ad I thought it was only for like Thursday or Friday like all the other anime movies have been like uh Boku Hero uh Konosuba Tanya I thought it was like one night only special event and I was like fate Heaven's Field movies, they were all like one night only things, and so I just was like, ah, oh, nah, you know, we got the Mortal Kombat thing going on, and I've already committed to that, so I'm going to skip it, and it's like, no, they're, they're giving it a full release, like, like a couple of weeks in the theaters, and so I was like, oh, so I'm probably going to go watch it this weekend, the, the weekend of uh, uh, the recording of this uh, podcast, yeah. um, but it, it made 19.5 million, Mortal Kombat made 22, and so it's like, I I, I never saw this coming. I honestly never saw this coming. And and again, I re- I remember what we were saying on on previous podcasts, uh, where you said it, where you were the one that that acknowledged the people when they were just like, ah, oh, it's only got good animation and good characters and a good story. And other than that, it sucks ass. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so it has all the elements of a good series, which is why people like it. Is that what I'm getting? It didn't have any of that. It didn't nobody, have any of that. Would watch no, it. Nobody would care. It'd just be another generic <laughs> anime. It's like, okay. Okay. So I'm like, all right. And so, you know, yeah. And so that's that's basically where I'm coming from now. It's like, in, now that people recognize that this is... And again, we've had other examples. Like, the Fate movie, like, Heaven's Field made a, what, a 300,000 or 500,000? Which is... You know, is not as big, obviously, because I think Boku Hero and Dragon Ball... Dragon Ball, I think, made, like, what, two million? The Broly movie? Uh, I think it was, like, one... I think it was one, 15, actually. It's 15? Then there you go, yeah. Let me check. Um, Just to verify. Broly made mo- money. Uh, Fate made, like, what? Like I said, 300 or 500K? Um, <laughs> the Konosuba movie... The Konosuba, I think, made a mil, I want to say. If not a little bit under a mil. Because I know our theater in San Francisco was sold out. So, <laughs> there was no space. There was no seats. Um, and what else? The the Tanya movie, I don't know if that made it anyway. That was just a fun movie, though. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then the Boku Hero movie made it like a mil or so. Um, but but yeah, people are, are starting to notice now. They're starting to recognize that uh, anime is profitable. Anime is, is fun. Anime is welcoming. Anime is basically... It, it can be a serious thing it can make a turn serious profits and uh you know again 
I this is going to bring people that you know are are tired of the the Marvel and the DCs and what they're doing with their uh, just inclusivity agendas. Okay, and, so Dragon Ball Super mm, Broly mm, made thirty million. Jesus, that's combined at the end of its run. Yeah, in the states. Mm, jeez. So. Yeah, I, I think it was out. No, the one before that. Um, Resurrection of F with Frieza when he came back. I remember they extended the release for that because it was doing so well. Mm-hmm. This one, I think they had given it a full release because it was Dragon Ball, and they learned. <laughs> yeah, they 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 had already knew that it was going to make money. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it goes. Um, <clears throat> and so yeah, they're they're starting to take it serious, and so my again my concern is that this is just going to become people with agendas now are going to try to co opt it, and it's all like. You know the the people like like me and Roman, and again, it's not gatekeeping when they're already gatekeeping you. You know when they've already come in there and they're like, "This anime thing seems great, but you know what it needs? Representation." And it's like, "No, it's giant robots and demons in Meiji era Japan." Yeah, but why isn't this giant robot waving a rainbow flag? You know, your Star Wars pilot is a rock. I don't want to hear it from you. Okay, <laughs> shut your mouth get out of here with that so you know it's it's like that and that's what i'm saying and what's funny is that most of these concerns that they have the the mangas and animes are dressed in their own also how dare you assume it's a robot (laughs) non-gender conforming robot (laughs) (laughs) don't fist androids right (laughs) oh man like yeah for instance the um the 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 rocks the gems show which is basically the anime version of Steven Universe. Look at how great that show is. Oh, God, what was the name of that show? Illustrious something. Uh, World of Illustrious or Illustrious World or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look at that one. That one has non-gender conforming rock waifus. Look how great that is. So, and that one's on Amazon Prime, by the way. So, it's already doing it. All these issues that they're concerned with that they keep bringing up that they want Marvel, Disney, DC, Star Wars to address... Anime has already done it on its own. Yeah, they didn't need anybody to complain. No, <laughs> they just did it, and it was engaging, and it was good. And that's what. And, and again, you explain it to these people, it's like, nah, because it's not right in their face in their exact way that they want it. And it's like, you know what? Then you're not even here for this. You're not here for the art. You're not here for the entertainment. You're here to push an agenda, and that's what bothers the hell out of me. Yeah. Because there's no talking to these people. There's no like, well, you can go watch this show. It's like, no, this show sucks because it's not popular. It's not Demon Slayer that makes 19 million in its opening weekend. And it's like, okay. All right. Even though Muzan clearly just jumped from being a man to a woman and, you know. Right. So, and and Nezuko was an empowered woman. Just whooped the hell out of everybody on that train. So, oh, man. And that's and that's all one of the things I was getting excited about was uh, Ueda Reina because we're about to get her FGO event. She's gray. In the in the detective waiver show, and then you know she also does uh Kanal, who you know Kanal and uh, uh, Shinobu are just like in the end for like a couple of minutes. Yeah, when, yeah. but still, it's representation, right? So yeah, um, yeah. That's that's a hell of a lineup. The Butterfly Sisters, Kayano Ai, Hayami Saori, Ueda Reina. Damn, I, I might have to switch my allegiance to the Butterfly Sisters. <laughs> You should. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Mitsuri. Mitsuri through and through, man. Pillar of love. Kanahana Zaba team. Represent. Also boobs. But anyways. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's... And, and yeah. And again, I will say, not to just kind of just stroke and, and swallow Ufotab all the way. I said this, like, what, almost two years ago now? Or was it last year? That Uvotop didn't pay their taxes, so it's not like they're flawless. So I hope they learned their lesson and they paid their taxes this time. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, but they... other than that, to, to say that one of the most high-quality animation studios that evolves the craft on their own sucks just because you don't like it because they ignore your agenda, that's, that's on you. Yeah. What was it? Was it a? It was Konosuba where they were complaining about uh, the villain, weren't they? Yeah. The Sylvia. Trans. Sylvia. Yeah. 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 
the 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 futanari essentially. Right. Yeah. But um <laughs> really? I remember they were saying they shouldn't try to make trans jokes. That's what they came up with. Not not the uh the uh the joke on about an attempted assault on Cosmo. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> they were cool with that. They were cool with that, but the, the trap, that's what they're like, now you've gone too far. <laughs> oh, those orc women were getting a piece of Cosmo ass that night. <laughs> oh, and I want to remind you that Academy Award winning screenwriter of Pulp Fiction said this was the greatest movie he had ever seen. <laughs> He did. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't me talking <laughs> shit. This is a true story. You don't again. You don't need to take my word for it. But look it up or ask me, and I'll give you the link. Uh, so this is uh, that's that's fun. That's what they had a problem with. Okay. Yeah, it was the trans jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Making fun of Sylvia because it was Sylvia, right? Yeah, yeah, Sylvia was her name. Because uh, no, Kazuma, her name too. So yeah, because Kazuma didn't want. Didn't, didn't want, want a boner. To, didn't want a boner. Yeah. Didn't want to get absorbed by her. Okay, that's where we draw the line. The jokes on the attempt at assault, though, on the Cosmo. That, that, that's, uh, that's acceptable. He's a man. He's a white male. It's okay. Go ahead and assault him. <laughs> but how dare you make fun of the Futanari? You've gone too far, Konosuba. <laughs> you all deserve Star Wars. <laughs> uh, you all deserve Cap and, and Winter Soldier. Oh, man, I said that, too. I was like, they're going to come. They're going to be like, Tanjiro, you need to do better. It's like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. So that's what I said, man. They're, they're noticing us now. There's a meme, too, where um, this is maybe from 2018 now. But uh, it was the two guys, and they were looking into the sunset, and one was, like, a cape hero, like Superman, and it said comics, and the other one was, like, a barbarian dude that said, like, fantasy, and they were looking into the sunset, and they were like, ah, oh, we've done it, we've become mainstream, and we've accomplished our mission, now, it's your turn, and they turn around, and it's the little kid who's just, like, a weeb, and it says anime, he's got the Naruto headband on, and he's got, like, Deku's costume on, <laughs> and it's like, that's where, we're, yeah, that's where we're at right now, you know? Yep. Like, Lord of the Rings and uh, Game of Thrones has made fantasy acceptable, and, you know, DCU and MCU have made superheroes acceptable, and now anime is coming up, because it's the only one that hasn't been uh, infiltrated yet. But uh, as I have my Uzaki Nesso that Roman bought, go check out his shop. Yes. Um, you know, and we're watching Nagatara that we're going to get to, and, and we were just watching it before this, and I'm just like... Uh, it's funny because Nagataro has that us accent that Uzaki has too. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe our bully characters all need to have that southern J Japanese accent to make them adorable. I can't tell you, but it works. Yeah. Uh, um. And 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 yeah, man. It's uh. That's why I said, man. They're they're recognizing anime, and in a minute they're gonna try to to infiltrate it because there's gonna be nobody's gonna be watching American comics. No one's gonna be watching Phase Four. No one's going to be reading whatever ch Children of the Atom, New New Warriors. They're, they're not going to be reading that. Why, why would you want to read Snowflake and Safe Space when you can go read Froppy and Deku and Uraka? Uravity. Why, why? Why? Why would you do that? And I heard that apparently now Boku is about to end as well, or it's end, it's nearing the end, and we all just know that it's just going to basically become Boku Hero Shippuden. Let's not kid ourselves. So. Yeah, it'll jump forward to when he's a active hero. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll just do it all over again. Or it'll be his kid. Man, they should make a Deku. series about Deku's, uh, Deku's be, kid's dad. Or Deku, yeah. It'll be Beku. Beku? Instead of Deku. Oh, jeez. It just writes itself. <laughs> Which is also funny too when you when you bring that up. It's like you see this a lot. Like the Shonen Jump tropes keep happening. Like you can literally be like, okay, now flashback arc. Now torment arc. Now his parents arc. And it's like they keep doing it and it keeps working. It keeps working. But then with American comics where they like get to Spider Man fifty seven and then they cancel it and then they go back to like Amazing Spectacular Astonishing Spider Man number one and it's like why? why they keep trying to reboot the characters and all of this and it's like anime doesn't reboot they just use the same formula and just change the sauce on top and it works 
it consistently they keep getting manga volume 30 manga volume 40 then they hit naruto volume 98 and then they change over to shippuden and then they get to another hundred volumes and why why do they keep doing it because they don't mess with it because they just let it ride they don't try to inject their personal politics like hmm what do i feel like today what's my soup of the day and they just inject it it's like no it's not that's just not how it works yeah so unless you're like golden boy manga author <laughs> but then his manga got canceled before it ended so uh, why you see what, what happened what did happen to him he, he, oh he was definitely trying to push his political agenda in there was he trying to start respecting women uh no it was <laughs> definitely wasn't that okay i mean it's <laughs> kind of hard to do that when you're talking politics while doing an entire manga volume to what was it kintaro yeah his first sex time with his girlfriend okay a whole manga volume and they're talking politics while they're doing it yeah don't do that <laughs> don't do that <laughs> don't do that when, when especially when your character his reputation is licking toilet seats because a woman sat on it yeah don't don't do that they'll all of a sudden think that my politics is great that's not gonna work <laughs> yeah and don't get me wrong i continue reading it but it was bad <laughs> i was like i hope this gets good yeah. again yeah but then it just ended like there was no actual conclusion it just ended yeah and, and you know and honestly that's kind of what we were talking about last night in the discord last night is the recording of this podcast because uh roman was we were talking about the subtitles and and how i was saying that and i said that that's how they because they're, they're dubs when they did the dub of like dragon maid and when remember when toru approached lukoa because it was the seasons were changing and yeah. Toru is just like, oh, you changed your outfit. And then, um, what's her name? That broad. Um, she goes and she does the voice of, of Lukoa of Quetz. And she's just like, oh, yeah, because I wanted to avoid the gaze of the patriarchy. And it's like, what? And it's like, no, it's because Lukoa is trying to be incognito. So she's running around in shorts, jean shorts, and a tank top in the middle of, like, fall and the winter. It's going to look suspicious. And dragons are still vulnerable. Remember, Dragon Maid opened with Toru being stabbed and being wounded. So dragons can be injured. So it's like she's trying to remain incognito. And it's just like, oh no, it's the male patriarchy. Shut your mouth! And then it's the um, Jamie Markey. Oh, God. And then she did it again with My First Girlfriend is a Gal. I, I That one I don't remember. I didn't watch that one because I didn't even want to bother with it. When I heard she tried to do the same thing again talking about the patriarchy and i'm like you're you're talking about a a, a gal gyaru character here who they don't care about patriarchy at all they care about being trendy being fashionable and being what's hip what that what do they care why would they even know about the patriarchy they, they tend to skip school that's their reputation which is also why the anime worked because she she cared a lot and she wasn't dumb right so but that same rate she wouldn't be talking about the patriarchy either so that's why it's just kind of like this this disconnect. And then when people are like, well, if that's what you're going to feed me in my dubs, then I'm not going to buy it and I'm not going to watch it. And then they come at you and they're like, well, if you don't buy Blu-rays, you're killing the industry. And it's like, shut up. And so that's why now that I, I feel that they've caught on to how dubs are uh, being... Gar- and then um, they did it again in the most recent, in last season, the one about the skateboarders. Okay. And they said it's all like, was it... Welcome to all my, my, my bros, my, my sisters, my bros, and my non-binary hoes. And I was like, oh my god. That was an actual line from the dub. They just don't get it, man. They just don't get it. And that's why I'm saying, that's why I said when they can't push it in the dub, because they get so much blowback, then it's like, well, no one cares about our dubs, let's put them in the subs now. And I'm like... It's, any way they can kind of stick in their agenda, they're going to do it. And that's why I'm, just, I'm I'm taking a firmer stance and just rejecting all of it. You know? That's why I just I refuse to watch Nagataro on Crunchyroll. And I knew it was going to happen when they changed the, the the title from Don't Bully Me to Don't Toy With Me. And I was like, this that's controlling language. That's how it all begins. So I'm I'm just not going to have it. I'm just not having it. So it's like, no, I'm, I'm good. And we were talking about that Nagataro Nendoroid 2, which will probably be the first uh, merch that I buy. <laughs> and all, all eight of her faceplates, because she has all those expressions, all those different emotions. I've already got a figure, so... Oh, really? They actually yeah. have a figure? Yeah, they have a figure. 
Price figure or statue? No, figure, figure, statue. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I don't even want to buy the manga. I don't want to, I'm not going to buy the Blu-ray. I'm not, anything that says, don't toy with me is, I'm not buying it. And watch, that's what I was going to say on the Nendo. Don't toy with me. Because that's, it's just easier to, to keep it all branded now. But yeah. Yeah, man, I, I'm, yeah. This is how, this is how I fight back. This is how I stand my ground. Okay. <laughs> that's, yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of what we were discussing a bit last night, and to further clarify my stance and how I bring it all around and all that, and yeah, yeah, the funniest moment of uh, Winter Soldier and Winter Falcon, whatever it's called, Baron Zemo dancing. Get it? Because it's funny. Because he's a white guy. White guys can't dance. Isn't it funny? Huh? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So Demon Slayer made almost twenty million dollars. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go watch that. I'm gonna go watch that this weekend. I'm gonna go do my part. Let's keep anime, anime. And, uh, yeah. 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 Cool. So, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've talked for a minute. I'm going to drink some water. You talk now. I, I've, I, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that was Sano and his rant. <laughs> for now. I'm rehydrating so I can rant some more. I'm just, I, like I said, I'm so happy. I've met some lovely, wonderful people through this community and all of that. And, you know, I, I see other communities and, and how issues of the modern day just drive them insane. And it's like, well, if you just don't bring those into the anime community, you'll, you'll have fun. I mean, you know, it's already a, a community that's plagued with self-esteem issues. <laughs> so it's like, let's not bring real world politics into it either. We don't need that. You know, we're, we're having fun over, over cartoons, you know. She's literally a, a cartoon girl that smacks around someone older than her because she doesn't know how to admit her feelings. So just don't, don't inject real-world politics into it. Who cares? Have fun. Relax. Feel awkward about her, uh, her advances like the rest of us. I don't feel awkward. I know we were just talking about self-insert characters, but I think uh, Senpai might literally be, literally be Roman. So. She'd be all like, Oh, doesn't that, aren't you embarrassed? Roman's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So, since we're on Nagatara, you want to talk about Nagatara? Sure. <laughs> I mean, we did just finish watching it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm caught up now because I, at the very least, like I said, I haven't been watching anything else, but I wanted to at least be caught up on Nagataro because uh, it is one of the popular ones. Um, so, and I asked this the last episode, so let me start off by asking again. Three episodes in, how accurate is it to the manga? And I know you've put up one instance where they have deviated right. with the, the succubus costumes. Right. Which I don't understand why they changed if they showed up like Nagatoro's butt like fully exposed <laughs> like why, why are you going to change that if you were willing to show a naked Nagatoro well from the back but still um, maybe maybe they'll change it up on the blu-ray maybe we'll see and depending on what they give with it I might buy it <laughs> <laughs> um let's see other than that uh I don't think I've noticed a whole lot. Um, they've been pretty accurate with it. I think um, the only thing I would say, well, because it's the manga and stuff and not anime, they she kind of repeats a lot of things a lot more than it seems like she does in the manga. Like when she's calling him gross and she's just repeating it and repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. It's like, mm -hmm. 
I don't remember you doing that, but okay. Whatever. <laughs> I guess it's to further drive home how annoying she is. I guess that's supposed to be it. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's some other things. I have to go back and read what the, the chapters that these are covering. But... Yeah, I haven't noticed too much as far as changes to what to the anime from the manga. It's been pretty accurate. Yeah, although I didn't expect uh, her friends to kind of be tan too. Ah, yeah, that's a good point. All of them too. So, I don't even know their names. There's the the annoying one, the gal one, and then Gamo because Gamo is voiced by. Mikako Komatsu, so that's the only reason why I know her name. Yeah, there's Gamo. Uh, Yoshi is the one that keeps repeating what everybody else says. Okay. She was the one that was sitting next to Gamo. And, uh, what was the name of the other girl? The other girl I hardly ever see. So. Hmm. Was the restaurant, was that from the manga as well? Was that all accurate? Yeah, that was all there. Okay. Um, yeah, everything that they said in there was pretty pretty much what they said in the manga he was watching to wait to see if she would uh, bully them like like she does to him and she didn't <laughs> no only one special guy gets that treatment yeah Sakura that's her name oh, okay the one from the from the restaurant yeah she's boy crazy so mm. she's fun. always like after guys fun and actually, I think she ends up joining a uh, a game club. Hmm. I mean, she was messing with the guys in there at first, you know, trying to pit them against each other. But then she liked it there, so she stuck around. <laughs> <laughs> so now she's like their queen. <laughs> Amazing. Um. But yeah, uh, they're going by pretty quick, actually. I think. Because I don't remember them getting to the friends as fast as they did. Uh, but, I mean, they've been kind of putting multiple chapters into one episode. So it makes sense. I'm assuming we'll see the uh, art art club president soon. <laughs> oh, fun. I, I, don't, I don't know if we found out what's her voice actress by now. But, no. We'll, fit, we'll find out later. After she debuts. Um... Yeah, they don't even have her listed here, still. <laughs> they, they they showed her in the last commercial, but yeah, but yeah, we know she's there. She's, we know she's animated, but yeah, they'll be good times. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I liked the uh, the last episode where uh, Gamo and Nagataro and, and we're all like, I'm talking uh, I'm talking shit about your boy, and Nagataro's like, you can't talk shit about my boy. Only I can talk shit about my boy. And Gamo was like, what you gonna do about it? And they were just kind of like, ah. Sarah. Yeah, I, I actually like that. I like that. That was fun. Yeah, that, she's going to keep doing that. Yeah. Uh, Gamo, she's going to keep trying to push Nagatoro's buttons when it comes to uh, Senpai. Paisen? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I like that. Because she could tell. Yeah. You kind of saw it on her face that so she could see that she likes him. Right. And now she's just trying to mess with her. <laughs> but uh, Nagatoro's kind of yandere a bit. So. Yeah, I don't, it's like, is that what it is? It's Yandere? I couldn't even tell what Dede she is. It's like, Sundere kind of? Yandere? Little, yeah, I mean, when she was interacting with, uh, what's her face? Uh, Yoshi. Yeah, Yoshi. Definitely, the Yandere was coming out. Um, but uh, when we were getting to the uh, push my nipples challenge, that was kind of soon a little bit. Uh, and, and it just... I, imagining Ui Sakasumare in the recording booth trying to pretend to whistle. It's kind of like, okay. Okay. She was getting nervous. She was like, is he actually going to do it? <laughs> and twist my nipples. So, yeah, that was that was pretty good. I, you know, and I maybe it was because I, I had a misunderstanding when we were talking about this. I thought that honestly Nagatara was going to be way more cruel. I thought there was going to be l fewer uh, Uzaki moments like derp moments dork moments yeah but there's actually shockingly a lot and 
I, I knew that that was going to be the gimmick of the show, was that she acts like a jerk, but then she always gets her comeuppance. I just didn't think it... It almost is, like, more even than I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, 80-20. It's almost, like, 60-40 that Nagataro comes comes up, and then 40% that Pison gets his, uh, his comeuppance. Yeah. So it's a lot fairer than I thought. Definitely. Um, and it just gets... In my opinion, better. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> it goes on. It, well, like when we did Uzaki, like in Uzaki, it was always like almost instant. Like Uzaki was a dork, and then she instantly paid for it. Yeah. Like the retribution was like always, like not too long after she was acting like a dork. Right. But in this one, uh, Nagatara does get away with it, but not all that often. Yeah, only uh, every once in a while, like when she was. What, in the last episode, he's telling him, you gotta smack my shoulder? Yeah. And she's just egging him on, and he smacks her in the boobs. <laughs> which, <laughs> which I think was less embarrassing and more painful, uh, because it's it's notoriously uh, common knowledge that uh, punching women in the boobs hurts. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, a, it's almost roughly the equivalent, roughly, roughly the equivalent of kicking dudes in the nuts. So... Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So I know what to go for then. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, time I was ever assaulting you, yeah, just smack her boobs. That'll back her down. Yeah. And then just call it an accident afterwards. So. And then she's flat, so it's going to hit her chest too, like her chest bones. So, you know, you wouldn't even recognize that in the anime because they meet, make her seem like she's more stacked than she should be because she was, like, pushing him in when she was teasing Spison. And it was like, oh, I thought she was supposed to be flat. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm confused on how this character is designed now. Yeah, she's supposed to be a little flatter. Let me see if we got a... Yeah, see. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, well, there's one change, actually, from the comic and the manga. I mean, the comic, the manga and the anime, I mean. Yay. Uh, the one that brought the guys to the restaurant was Yoshi, not Sakura. Okay. So you... But that was before they started showing their faces. Like, her face was still covered. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the guys. It's not until later when they show their faces. And Sakura wasn't actually introduced until maybe a few chapters later. Got it. But I guess they, they fixed it that way because she's more known as the uh, the boy crazy one. So Yoshi doesn't really doesn't seem to really care. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't seem like she's all there. No, but she does know what a fusion is. So <laughs> she's cool. Okay. <laughs> well, she has knowledge of Dragon Ball Z, so she gets a pass in Roman's book. Yeah, I mean Nagatoro and uh, Senpai were ex- were like stretching, and they were doing like, like they were pulling on their arms like this. Yeah, so it looked like fusion. And Yoshi walks up on them, and they're just kind of staring at each other. And she goes, "Fusion?" <laughs> and they're like, "No, it's not what's happening." You can't say that. That's how we get sued. If you want to get sued. Unless you're uh, 100 girlfriends who really, 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 really love you. And then they mention any any manga they want. <laughs> I mean, they had a whole chapter where they did nothing but, uh, what do you call it, product placement for the uh, merch. The entire chapter was just merch talk. For the, the 100 girlfriends? Show? Yeah. Uh-huh. They, they, they were releasing like the keychains and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And they're all like, you could do this with the keychains and you could do that and you could have them. Like, <laughs> there's like a whole, like almost 40 page chapter of just them talking about the merch. Wow. And that's the one where you said they just introduced the Ada Ada, right? No, they just introduced the, uh, the cousin character. Okay. okay. Which, even in that chapter, the the main character was like, "Are you okay with this, Shueisha?" <laughs> <laughs> like, really? <laughs> or, okay, that's that's what I remember you sending me. Yeah. And in the next chapter, that was like the author is uh, more than ready to blame the 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 company for this. Then, <laughs> then take the blame himself. <laughs> like he's ready to just throw them under the bus. <laughs> Anyway, we were talking about Nagatoro. No, I mean they're all basically related now. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I you know I like I said I I like it. I I thought that it was gonna be a lot more bullying than I I was expecting. But uh, 
yeah, retribution comes comes swift, and uh, I like that we're we're playing a Guilty Gear Samurai Showdown. That's pretty fun. <laughs> so we have Kai Kiski from Guilty Gear fighting Cham Cham from uh, Samurai Showdown. I think that was pretty funny. Oh, is that who that was? Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, that was in the manga too. Really? Yeah, the whole thing, even her blowing in his ear and doing all the stuff to cheat so she could win. That's what. Or well, battle strategy, I guess. Yes. Her. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, is Nagatari even still going, or did it finish? No, the manga's still going. A wow. uh, new chapter just came out a couple. I think like last last week. Yeah, but she's getting less. Uh, teasing like she, I think in the last chapter she actually said because they were having a judo tournament at the school hmm. uh, her and senpai both lost but she mentions you know if I win next time would you give me a kiss as a prize and he's like oh you know you're just teasing me again and she's like I'm not teasing and then she runs off huh. so she's getting more uh, brave I guess and letting him know. I'm not teasing you this <coughs> time. Yeah, I, I noticed that whenever she's uh, doing that, they always depict the character as blushing. So that always was telling me that uh, she, it's never uh, what it appears to be. It's never apparent. She always has ulterior motives, basically. Yeah. So that's why I, I was caught off guard. I was all like, oh, she's just being a jerk, more so being a jerk. But now, like I said, I'm, she's more Uzaki than I thought she was going to be. Yeah, and I think in this last uh, episode, she even kind of sounded like Uzaki. Yes. A little bit more. Yes. Which I don't know how a lot of people are going to take that, because a lot of people didn't like Uzaki's voice. (laughs) (laughs) They they didn't like uh, Satania. I thought Satania was great. I thought she was great, too, but I don't know, some people... (laughs) Same same people that don't like Way of the Household Husband? I guess so. (laughs) Either way... Now you're also going to meet her sister at one point. She has an older sister, too. Is she, like, the youngest? I think so. Hmm. <laughs> her sister's pretty funny, but, yeah. You don't meet the brother yet. I haven't met the brother yet. Really? I don't think so. Huh. In, like, the five years that the show's been going on, they haven't shown him, huh? Or maybe they did show him, but it was more... They didn't show his face. It was one of the two. One of those? Yeah. Okay. How, how, is the, how is the sister? Uh, she likes teasing Nagatoro a bit. Interesting. Like when she met uh, Senpai, she was definitely teasing her about that. Let me see if I can find her in here. Yeah, when it comes to Nagatara, Roman is the expert, so that's why it's, I just drill him. He's the one who gets all the questions. So he's the uh, he's the expert. For now. Well, probably forever, because I'm going to keep reading the manga. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> GNA Reviews did their review as well. So the, uh, friends. yeah, they're they're uh, they do the uh, um, all the the FGO character reviews and the FGO uh, character guides or the event guides. Yeah, and then he also does uh, anime podcast reviews or anime reviews. So yeah, I haven't watched any reactions to this series yet. Yeah, usually I'm like, let's see what other people think, but I haven't done that yet. That's because all their their opinions suck. Let's be honest. There she is. I like her sister. Her sister's great. <laughs> yeah, she likes uh, teasing teasing her, especially when he's around. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Basically doing what older sisters would do. That's, pre- yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's like completely the opposite of uh, Uzaki's mom. Right. <laughs> This is again. I was, I was explaining. That's what my standard is right now. Is, uh, is everything is, is Uzaki? <laughs> yeah. Well, so far, Uzaki is the only one that's had any real controversy. Yeah. Nagatoro didn't have as much as I thought. 
Yeah, I because I, I think that... Uh, I, maybe I said this in the last podcast, or maybe I said it on the Discord, but if not, I just felt like uh, anybody that was coming in with like, hey, I'm going to hate on Nagataro for clout, uh, they the community pretty much made it apparent that nobody cares. You know, if you're going to hate on Nagataro because it's a show about bullying, romantic bullying, uh, nobody cares. Right. So... And I, and I think they kind of gave up on it. Um, because, yeah, you're right. I honestly was expecting more drama, too. But I guess, everyone, you know, people that, that liked it, that wanted to complain about it, just left. And the people that are excited to watch the show are still watching the show, obviously. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I... Because I think I remember when we were talking about when the show was going to air, I was saying that I think the first episode will probably have the most backlash. Mm -hmm. But even then... It seemed to it was more positive than negative as far as what I saw. Yeah, I, I think they realized that it was already going to be a losing battle. That they weren't going to convince anybody. They weren't going to get any any drama. No rage clicks. Nobody was you know secretly out there like yeah I can't wait to hate on this show. You know right. So like <laughs> like Uzaki. So and I, I think too that um, Uzaki's character design also kind of helped that because then everybody was going to use that as an excuse. Well, it's like, oh, well, she's dumb because all she does is just tease Senpai. Well, nobody cares. I want her to tease me too. Well, uh, her character is stupid looking. And then, they, then that became a whole different thing. Um, so, is that the best you got? Yeah. <laughs> her character design is stupid. Right. Okay. And? Yeah. So, those, those, yeah. But, um,. Yeah, not so much so. It's like everything, and on top of that too, um, you couldn't, you can't really. And I know I mentioned this too when we were off uh, air before we started recording. Uh, that Uisaka Sumide is just seems like she's just having the time of her life. Yeah, like she's just l loving it. Like she just is enjoying herself, um, and that's just to her credit because, she, like I said, she's pretty based. She seems like she doesn't care. I mean, I shared the music video the, to the opening, the official music video, and the opening where she just, like, shoves down the cameraman and just is all like, what you looking at? Pervert. I'm all like, yeah, that's the face of somebody that knows what she's doing. <laughs> she she has no cares in the world. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's the same kind of vibes that I get from Aoyuki, right. where Aoyuki just doesn't care either. And, I mean, again, you don't need to take my word from, for it, but you think that uh, a reserved Japanese woman that cares wouldn't slap dudes with a paper fan or punch dudes uh, on stage and use the Capcom uh, Street Fighter system, light, medium, fierce. Yeah, three levels of punch. <clears throat> um, By the way, bringing that up, yeah, I know we were just talking about Mortal Kombat earlier, but did you see on the wall on, on one of the scenes they had down, right, low punch? <laughs> no, I did not yeah. know. Yeah. Where I was, was about to ask whose whose move is that? Like everybody's, <laughs> it's like because uh, that's uh, Liu Kang's fireball uh, down forward, down forward punch or uh, down forward high punch is high fireball, down forward low punch is low fireball. Um, Sub Zero, that's ice ball. So that, it's a move for everybody. Yeah, it's too. it's a, it's a universal command. Okay, yeah, because it was on one of the walls and like it's like uh, yeah. graffiti. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. yeah. <clears throat> you can continue. <laughs> oh, no, I, uh, I just yeah. I just thought I'd mention that because I don't know if anybody else noticed because nobody said anything. I know yeah. I didn't say anything because I was like, I didn't... I, I mentioned that to someone on our FGO Messenger chat about how there's uh, uh, 30 years of Easter eggs because, again, they just were all over the place with with the show, with the, the games and all of that. And, um, you know, Kung Lao's Fatality was literally ripped from uh, MK10. So it's like, yeah. Oh, when he put the hat in the ground and yeah. the spin. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and what's funny, too, is that in the movie, you can also kind of uh, feel out, even though we were watching it on HBO Max, where, you know, they were expecting the audience to applaud. They're like, yeah! Especially us uh, uh, American degenerates. Um, because that's what uh, Noriko Shitaya, when, when she went to see Heaven's Feel, and she was like, wow, the, the American audience, they're applauding? This would never happen in a Japan Japanese theater. <laughs> um, in particular, uh, the, the second movie with uh, when Sakura offs Shinji, and everyone's like, wow! Everyone's applauding and clapping. And I was like, dude, Sakura just murdered Levy from Attack on Titan. Yeah, but he had it coming. He did. He did. Sakura did nothing wrong, but you know. 
Still. Well, I mean, she's a murderer, so. Yeah, <laughs> still a murderer. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Nagataro, though, did nothing wrong. No. So you can't prove it. No. So. You can't, uh, you can't use tears as evidence. No. They dry up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's, it's. Like I said, I was expect, and maybe it's like you said too, where um, when he, what is it? He changed from the the web comic to the manga, and he lo- lightened up the tone a little bit. Maybe that's also, uh, maybe that in changed my men- my mentality. Maybe if I would have gone in a little bit more raw or without previous knowledge, yeah, then I, I probably would be more mean. But watching all of this, it's like, oh yeah, no, this is like almost Uzaki level. It's not as bad as it is making. It's like okay, yeah, it's not bad. Like I said, the first episode, first couple chapters is the worst, but outside of that, it's more flirty. Yeah, and even then, even when she like literally made him cry, when she's patting, she's literally patting him with her own handkerchief. I was like, see, if she was a jerk, she wouldn't do that. Even though she was laughing while doing it, still, <laughs> that was a little bit of remorse that I wasn't expecting. I thought she was going to be way more cruel, right? But um, yeah. So, uh, and one thing I keep hearing is that I guess the manga artist used to be a doujin author, really artist as well. Yeah, I mean I shared that one comic that, but I think that he had done that after he had done Nagatara, the one with the the dude in the QB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I I wouldn't put it past him, you know. <laughs> so he he likes doing those flirty kind of uh, chick bullies dude into submission. Yeah. yeah. So. He's clearly a snoo snoo guy, and I can respect that. So, yeah, but can't we all? Yeah. yeah. Except for maybe one guy in the Discord. <laughs> uh, well, unless they're flat snoo snoo. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> but then, is it really snoo snoo? <laughs> More snoo. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make a. Make a, a countertop joke like you're getting the the thing you risk the biggest chance of doing is smashing your head on it like like John Wick slams your head into the counter that's you slamming your head into her flat chest <laughs> <laughs> getting a concussion yes your head gets caved in <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah opie jokes <laughs> so dude. Oh man, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I I like it. I like it. Um, and it, you know, I, I think that everyone is is having fun with it. I think everybody is seems to like it. And even again, same same guy in our Discord, Madoka bless him. Even he's enjoying it. Yeah. Even he likes Nagatara. So uh, I don't. I don't. Well, I was about to say I don't remember him saying anything about Uzaki, but then I was like, oh well, there's two reasons why he wouldn't like Uzaki. No, he's mentioned Uzaki. Yeah. More, more on the, her design's horrible. Exactly. Uh, than, you know, anything else. Exactly. Two reasons why. <laughs> and it's like, she's basically Nagatoro. Yeah. Just yeah. bigger boobs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Way bigger boobs. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the joke, too. She might even be as tall. How tall is Nagatoro? Now I gotta look that up. Yeah, which is funny, too, because, uh, uh, Nagataro is way younger than Uzaki because Uzaki's 20. So. Yeah. And but, uh, Nagataro's in what, a freshman? First, yeah, first year. So I think that's like a five year cap, I want to say. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Looking this up, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much, uh, there, uh, and yeah, I, I, I'm invested. Um, this is uh, definitely, if you're thinking about getting into the bullying series or the bullying lines, definitely should start with Takagi. So and work your way up. So Takagi, and if you can handle that or you don't think it's uh, annoying. And Takagi obviously is way slower too because Takagi is more like uh, wow. mental games. They are exactly the same height. That's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Four foot eleven. Oh, Both that, of them. That is, that is tiny. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Yeah. So it's ba- yeah, basically the same character. Yeah. Only one's flatter and more uh, tanned because she swims. Actually, Uzaki swims too. It's true. <laughs> it's the same character. It is the same character. <laughs> It is the same character. It's just one gets her come up and it's much faster. Yeah. Or, or in a shorter... She's not as good as it at, at being sadistic, let's say. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, she never made her senpai cry. Right. Yeah. Well, then, and to be fair, senpai also wasn't having none of her crap. No. So, like, no. So, if 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 she met uh, Thangatara's senpai... Uh, no, yeah, he'd be like... Meh. Yeah, he'd be in the corner. So and then Nagataro wouldn't get anything through uh uh was it you you not Yuichi. But yeah. Uzaki senpai. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's why it. I like them both so much. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're practically the same character. Hey. <laughs> hey. I, f- I do see a lot more people thinking that Nagataro was black though. Because tan people don't exist. So, what was it? I remember seeing one Twitter comment where, oh no, it was a Facebook comment <laughs> where they were talking about it. And this, I think it was a black guy. That's the, his photo was of a black guy. So <laughs> I'm assuming <laughs> he was like, I just don't like that she's you know a black bully. I'm like, but she, <laughs> no way. Yeah, no way. Oh. I was about to be like, she's not black though. And then I was going to get called a racist. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. I had the I had an image to back my argument up, though. So, But I, I, I'm not one of those people who constantly do that. I'm always like, I'm going to say this, and then I type out. I'm like, nah, that's good enough. And then I delete it. You know, I, I don't want to say that I'm validated. <laughs> but, but, all I'm going to say is if, if I'm too hardcore, if I'm too much, if I'm too brash or, or upfront about it, I'm just happy that Roman saw what I'm saying, and that that's that's pretty much what I'm going after. Is that they they don't care about the show, they don't because again Nagataro isn't tan skinned or dark skinned. Nagataro is light, fair skinned. Right. It's her club activity, swimming, leaves her out in the sun, and it's tanned. It's actually part of her character, if anything, not her description or her physical traits. It's her personality. It's her, her activity, too. You saw it as well when she was running in the rain and, and Pison can't even keep up with her. Yeah. Why? Because she's athletic. And so there's reasons to that. It's also from her endurance as well. Yeah. Um, but people don't get that. And I can't help you when that happens. It's like nobody sees that. Nobody else cares about that because we're here just to watch Nagataro get her comeuppance. But some people, they, they don't, they, they can't enjoy the show if it's not because of the fact that Nagataro is, is dark skinned right. it's like what okay alright okay so um, you know like I said I'm not trying to, to savor in the victory but uh, if you don't like me because it seems that that's, that's all I, I am concerned about when this topic arises that's fine you don't need to listen to me listen to Roman then am I limited you know <laughs> talking parts that's fine. Man. That's fine. Like I said, it, it it happens, and we're both aware of it. We both see it. We both know about these people and, and the, how they want to make it about themselves and not about enjoying the show or the nature of the show or anything like that. Just like, if it's not this way, I can't enjoy the show. And it's like, eh, no. I also remember seeing, I think it was on Twitter, but it also could have been on the Discord. This is about a different series. Mm. Uh, I think it was a light novel where... Yeah, I think it was Twitter, because they were talking about how, you know, Twitter crops photos Mm -hmm. to focus on certain things. Yeah. Um, This one focused on, like, the stomach area of a a female character. Okay. And she's wearing, like, this skin-tight thing. Yeah. So she looked like she was a black character. Okay. But then when you click on the image, she's not. (laughs) Wow. And everybody was getting upset about it, because why isn't she black and blah, blah, blah. And then they found out that she was a slave. And they're like, never mind. <laughs> you can keep that one. <laughs> Self owned. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my people. Yeah. yeah, some people jump on these, like, anger 
the rage bait. Ra- yeah, the rage bait thing. Just, like way, way before they even find out what it is they're raging about. Right. This non-issues. Yeah. It's, 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 like those people who now, like recently, those people who were trying to. I don't know. I don't know if you would say they were trying to cancel him or not. Mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. for playing a black character. Oh in yeah, oh Thunder. yeah, oh they've been that's they've been trying to do that, which is funny because when it came out in what oh eight oh nine nobody oh, cared nobody cared they thought it was hilarious yeah they thought and it was part of the resurrection of his career yeah you know because it was like he did Iron Man and everyone's like okay we can see you Tony and then he did um and he did Tropic Thunder and we're like all right Robert Downey Jr. he's like our he's our guy. Uh, and he was on Joe Rogan too, and he said, hey, "I'm never going to apologize for that. Why? After everything it's done for my career and pulling me out of the gutter, why would I ever be sorry about that?" He's like, "No." Yeah. Uh, and then, and then he just ignores it after that. I to this day still, I haven't seen him apologize. I haven't even seen him talk about it ever since that Joe Rogan moment. Yeah. Um, and so, good, good for him. What does he have to be ashamed about? To well, carry a role. Yeah. And he he's an actor, so he pretended to be this character who was a dick. <laughs> so <laughs> his skin tone changed yeah he just wiped it off <laughs> they, they, he's like oh yeah yeah you know I, I character acted and I, I went and did surgery to get into the character role and then at the end he's just like okay I just turn it off okay it's no longer we're not acting anymore so <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's and it's so it's nonsensical it's not it's yeah and if it if it's to be viewed as insensitive, well, this isn't the form for that. This is it's anime, man. Yeah. It's anime. And we're talking about Japanese teenagers. We're, think, we're talking about things from a Japanese perspective. And if you want to do things from a Western perspective or, a, or Western values, go watch Cartoon Network. Plenty of shows that in, incorporate the modern day views and issues. Plenty of that going on right now. Knock yourself out. In the meantime, we're going to be watching Nagataro. Bully Senpai. Bully Senpai and almost get our nipples twisted. Right. (laughs) 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 So that that killed me. (laughs) God damn it. Oh, man. Yeah, that'll never be on Toonami. Watch at Anime Expo. Nagataro coming to Toonami! Fuck. (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Senpai will never fight back at me because he's afraid I'll call the patriarchy. Yeah, he's part of the patriarchy. See? See what I mean? See what I mean? I can already call him the dumb right now. <laughs> oh. Man. Well, I, well, what, what was her name again? The one that really repeat? Repeat stuff? Yoshi. Yoshi. Yeah. Uh, why? 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 Why are we still? Why are we still dubbing anime? <laughs> why are we still doing this? My goodness! Uh, didn't Sean Schimmel get uh, like sexually harassed as well? Spe- uh, ooh, so we have actually uh, Metal Gear is playing because they're doing the marathon right now. This guy, the guy that plays Raiden, he's uh, getting recanceled, even though he he proved his innocence in court. They still, uh, I guess he was in uh, Warcraft, World of Warcraft, and uh, they, they're not calling him for the remake. No? No. Even though he proved his innocence, they're still like, yeah, well, you know, the allegation is all we need, so yeah, we're not calling you back. Yeah, man, it's it's bad. Yeah, it's how it is. Yeah. Once you're accused, it's over. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, you know, it, it, the world of anime, it has its issues as well. It's not perfectly flawless, don't get me wrong. But at least when they do it, it's like something like major, earth-shatteringly bad. I keep thinking about the dude from Yakuza who actually lost his uh, role in Yakuza because he, uh, he played one of the Yakuza crime lords. And he actually got caught snorting cocaine, which is pretty Yakuza. Remember, you made the white stuff, you know, the good stuff. <laughs> Sir, we don't carry that. He's talking about flour. (laughs) Oh, man, that was so good. I can't wait for the next season. 
And, and I know we kind of talked about it last time, but that, that's another good one, too. It's like that and Nagatara right now are like the highlights of the season. But, I mean, I'm not saying that there's not anything good. I just haven't gotten around to it. But so far, if those two are, shows are indicative of this current season, it's a, it's a good season. So, and, and I don't care what you guys say about that stop shop animation. I'm okay with it. I got over it. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, so. Are you going to watch the live action of that, though? Maybe. Yeah. Is that out already? Uh, it is out. It actually came out um, before the the uh, anime, obviously, but it's out there. Why don't we do that for our next uh, watch party? Uh, yeah, if I can find it. It might it, it might even be on Netflix. But, okay, yeah, I'll check it out. Let's see if I can find it. Too. So, <laughs> Which one? I said I have Netflix, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, there we go, then. We might do that. That might be a live-action way the household has been. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, there we go. Nagatara. See, Nagatara's making solutions. Yeah. Man. She hopes out in many ways. <laughs> uh, build up Senpai's confidence. <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah. Yeah. I, I mentioned this to Roman too, but uh, and I kind of I think I might have even said this on the Discord, but it's kind of like you have a tale of two harems, and so you you have Yoshitsugu who voices Kirito, and then Futaro and Quintuplets, and uh, Belkun and uh, Danmachi, and you know he always gets all the the good harems, the girls that that are all fawning over him, and then you got uh, Daiki Yamashita, and he's Deku, and all his like the chicks always beat him up. Same thing in uh, Oresuki with Ponzi and Cosmos and all that. And, you know, with, uh, uh, with what's her face, Sunflower and, and, you know, Beach, 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 Beach. And it's like he just gets all the crap harems. He gets his nipples twisted by Nagataro. You know, he... Uh, you know, he, he's gonna, he wants to hook up with uh, Ochako, but his, you know, his pinky's all bent out of shape and all that. All his fingers are all bent backwards. This guy's getting beat up by everybody. Yep. So you, you just can't catch a break. So, this guy. Oh, man. No luck. No. No luck for Deku. But, um, if you're Yoshitsugu, though, you get all the, you get all the chicks. So... What you gonna do? A tale of two harems. Have they ever worked together? Uh, probably. Yeah, <clears throat> Daisuke, Daiki Yamashita. I really just know him from from Deku, uh, Orisuki, obviously Nagataro, Jojo. He was in the most recent one, Jojo Part Five, um, because he was Naranshia. His uh, stand was Aerosmith. Yeah. Um, but Rolling Stones are better. No. What? Yeah. <laughs> you said Rolling Stones? Yeah. Rolling Stones are in. I think Rolling Stones are part six, I want to say. But yeah, Rolling Stones are coming, so. Um, yeah. I don't know if they're better or not. I haven't gotten that, that far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Aer- Aerosmith Metallica, that was part five. Part six is what? Goo Goo Dolls. Uh, burning Down the House. <laughs> I was like, that's that's the name of a song. I don't, that's not even the name of a band. That's the name of the song. Right. Um, White Snake. White Snake is in there. White Snake. Yeah. Uh, that's name. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, Foo Fighters, obviously. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. Is he an alien? Uh, kind of. You're actually kind of. You're almost about 50, 60% of the way there. Um, it is It is not a normal organism. We'll say that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Jojo Part Six is coming. Yes, it is. Another uh, good voice actress, I Fardos. Madoka, bless her and her kind heart. And so. her muscles. And her oh, <laughs> glorious muscles. So, um, yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's that's pretty much it. That's I mean, that's all I got for now. Um, I'll, I'll get back to. You. I'll have to look up to see if uh, Daiki and and Yoshitsuga have worked together. And I'll bet you they have, but. Uh, or Daiki's probably some background voice in Don Machi or something. Or he's he's one of the like background characters in Sword Art. Probably. So, yeah. Um but I mean Yoshitsugu was was Inosuke in the uh, Demon Slayer, so yeah. At this yeah. point I'm fairly convinced everybody's in Demon Slayer though. <laughs> so we'll have to see who comes in in season two. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, uh, the dude that does um, uh, Fire Guy, uh, even he was. Um, I think he's uh the same dude that does um, Overlord Eins. He's Eins. I believe he's Eins, if I'm not mistaken, because I was just looking him up the other day. Um, and yeah, I, and he was yeah, yeah, and I was like, really. <laughs> kind of a kind of a tool but he also he won my respect by the end of the movie so <laughs> yeah um also is napoleon in fgo oh is he yeah um yeah where are you ren goku ren goku yes okay who's your voice actor yeah Satoshi Hino. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> if you told me his name, I have no idea. If you told me his characters, I'd be able, I'd be more, uh, be able to point him out better. He was actually born in San Francisco. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, he's the guy who did uh, Eins. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, who yeah. else? The the uh, the pillar voice actors, the other guys that were that came out of the like the last three episodes of the show, basically, they all seem to have uh, big reputations. So, and if I'm not mistaken, it's the uh, the stone guy. I think is going to be the next focus or the next story arc. Um, no, it's uh, a flamboyant guy. Okay, there you go. Yeah, because he was on the uh, image, the, the preview that showed. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that that'll be something to look forward to. Um, and it's it's always interesting too. Like I said, I think I mentioned this years ago when we were doing this. But uh, why doesn't uh, Ufotab do like a Shonen Jump series? And it's like, well, it'd be too expensive. But well, it looks like uh, they're gonna they're doing it now. So, well, uh, yeah. Especially now that the Fate movies are all over. So the Heaven's Field movies are done. So well, they, they needed something to help make up those taxes they had to pay. Right. Which <laughs> I believe last I heard they had settled that. Yeah. So they did pay it, and the guy I think did some jail time, like a couple months in jail, and. Yeah, now they're they're back to business, but uh, basically a slap on the wrist. Don't it, do it again. Exactly. <laughs> but, or like, only four months. Yeah, yeah. You know those Japanese uh, systems, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, Nagatara, good Nagatara. show. Yep, yep. I can see why you wife her. Good call. Good call. <laughs> squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. I mean, what can I say? I have good taste. <clears throat> Once in a while, yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so I'm going to call you out if you keep this up. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's only 12 episodes, right? 12 14. 14. Four. Four. I believe so, yeah. 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 Cool, cool. Pretty positive they'll just get up to when... Uh, what is it, the uh, Culture Fest? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'll just get up to there. At least for this season. That's, That's a good guess. That's a good run. Because that'll be when they introduce the, the art club president and you get to see her get dragged out of her presentation for posing nude. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to find out who plays her. That's the, the big question that I have. Yeah, they're keeping it pretty under wraps, aren't they? Yeah. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think the only other show I'm really caught up with is the Godzilla one. Mm -hmm. Godzilla Singular Point. Which I remember I mentioned, what was it? Uh, was it during the uh, podcast yeah, the last, last time last that podcast. I was upset that nobody was yep subbing it yep because the that was the topic was what we're all watching and, and you wanted to watch you were looking for the godzilla one yeah and then i think it was that day or the next day i went on uh the place i go to get my my, my stuff <laughs> and i found one subgroup that's doing it just one which is all i need and thankfully they're good subs so i can't complain um much different than any other Godzilla thing I've seen so far. Uh, the monsters are a lot smaller, but still bigger than people. Except for Rodan. Rodan is like the size of a person and looks 
more like a what are they called pterodons mm-hmm. than uh, usual. That and there's like thousands of them. <laughs> okay. Is it supposed to be like it's a, a, a new new universe or something? Or yeah, it's a new thing. Oh, okay. Toho is very big on trying to reimagine Godzilla for some reason. Like they did that with with uh, was it Godzilla nineteen eighty four, which was basically a retelling of the first Godzilla, but bringing him into the more modern, uh, you know, world. Then there was Godzilla 2000, which again reimagined him. And basically every movie from the Millennium series was a reimagining of Godzilla. But keeping kind of close to the same design. Except for Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, all out of tech. Which was the most brutal Godzilla. Like, he didn't care. <laughs> he just killed him. So he, uh, what you're just saying is that he had a body count of nine people. Yes. Nine and a half. I think I think he killed a kid too. Wow, brutal, right? Um, and then there was uh, Godzilla: Final Wars, which was more closer to the Showa era. Godzilla. It was like a mix between Showa and Heisei uh, series. Mm-hmm. Like the facial feature was more Heisei like, but he was more built like Showa, only a little thinner. Um, then you remember the Godzilla animated movies mm-hmm. or movie at least where he was like a thousand feet tall yeah. or whatever right right <laughs> another reimagining then you got the Millennium series which again another reimagining but that's you know legendary and all them then you got this one which I, right now apparently Godzilla's dead they have a skeleton underneath the building but he's supposedly going to come back. I don't know how. Um, so right now all we've seen is a lot of Rodans. And uh, we just saw Angiris at the end of this last episode. Who um, is kind of like a Ankylosaurus. You know the one with the big ball at the end of its tail? Yeah. With the spiked shell. Yeah. Looks kind of like that. Except he's got more spikes all over his body. And he doesn't have the ball at the end of his tail. <laughs> There's okay. spikes. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a lot smaller. Like, he's maybe up to your ceiling. Oh, that's not that bad. I could take him out. Right? <laughs> just kick him in the kneecaps and just be like, ah, oh, bitch. Um, and there's some sea monster that's heading its way to Tokyo. Also, apparently, Kintoki found his way into this series. Uh, I guess while Gintama is on you know, over, he decided to come on to this one and help out and try to stop these monsters as a scientist. <laughs> That's funny. Does he find out to destroy Mecha Godzilla? We just pour my booze over the control panel? Not yet. Okay. Uh, we'll get there, though. Right now, he's building Jet Jaguar. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. He's like... These guys look like they work as like a... Electrical engineers. Okay. So they deal with like a bunch of different uh, mechanical creations. Like they're making a lot of robots and stuff. And this guy, the guy that runs the company, is like, we got to build this robot because we never know when we're going to need to defend against something. I don't know why he thought this, but. <laughs> Logic. They started building uh, Jet Jaguar, who's got like really thin arms and legs. Like. The body, we'll say, is from here okay. up. Okay. And the legs are from here down to the floor. <laughs> Tiny. Yeah. But I guess going by the uh, opening, he's eventually going to get uh, three legs. Okay. What is the third leg supposed to do? Uh, I guess help stabilize him. Okay. So when he's fighting a monster, he doesn't get knocked back, I would assume. Okay. He does look like Jet Jaguar, though, which is good. And Jet Jaguar is not supposed to be Ultraman, right? No, no, he's not supposed to be, but you can kind of tell that he was maybe influenced okay. by Ultraman. I actually don't know. 
if Ultraman came before Jet Jaguar? Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Because uh, I know there was another kind of Ultraman-like Toho character that also helped Godzilla. Not in movies. It was in his series. Like, it was an actual series where he fought, like, Gigan and King Ghidorah and Godzilla would come in and help every once in a while. It was from the 70s. <laughs> 70s are wild, man. Yeah. I think in that they actually killed Gigan. Hmm. They killed him off in that series. Which, weird, but okay. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, Toho. Um, but so far, it's really good. I like it. It's uh, interesting. Like I like the characters. There's only one waifu, really. Like, there's... Well, okay, there's another one, but she hardly ever makes any appearances. Is her name Mothra? No, nah, no Mothra yet. I'm assuming she'll make her appearance eventually. But right now they're just focusing on what to do about these monsters. Because they just keep popping up and then they just die, like, out of mm -hmm. nowhere. Mm -hmm. What about Mecha Godzilla? Uh, no Mecha Godzilla yet. Uh, right now they're. They don't even know about Godzilla. Like, they know there's a skeleton underneath this building of a giant creature. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what it is. Interesting. Um, and I don't know how it's going to come back to life. But it will. Well, they're going to wire the skull into the computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have a psychic link with another Godzilla. <laughs> Just go crazy. <laughs> Which is what, if I remember right, you said that that was how they built Mecha Godzilla. Was in the in Kong vs. Zilla, it was the skull of King Ghidorah. But if I remember what you were telling me, they made Mecha Godzilla by wiring it to the original Godzilla, right? Yeah, in the 2003 and 2004 Mecha Godzilla movies, yeah. it was the uh, skeleton of the original Godzilla from '54. They had found the bones and they just built around it. And then, just like with King Ghidorah, it takes over and it starts destroying the city <laughs> like, like it always did. Never learn a lesson. No. Nope. <laughs> we deserve to get smashed. Right. Well, I take that back. Those eight people deserve to get smashed. <laughs> the rest of us, oh, it'll be fine. Oh, it'll be okay, like Critical Drinker says. Oh, it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh... It'll be fine. <laughs> Mega Godzilla has always been one of Godzilla's strongest opponents. Even in the seventies, he needed uh, King Caesar's help to fight him, but they didn't actually defeat him until Godzilla became a magnet and pulled him towards him and was able to rip his head off. That's what Kong did. In this one, yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I think you were the one that was saying that was that they nerfed uh, Godzilla just so that Kong could get a little bit of a coup de gras. Yeah, there was um, I, th I think it was an article mm -hmm. going around where the director was saying that uh, Godzilla was basically tired, exhausted from his fight with what, King Kong and to blasting a hole all the way to the hollow earth. <laughs> I always find it funny how, because one, there are still people who are arguing that Kong didn't lose despite the fact that he, he died fighting Godzilla. Um, but they claim that because he beat Mecha Godzilla, he didn't lose to Godzilla. And it's like, you do realize that without Godzilla there to power up the axe, Me Kong was going to die too, right? He was going to die twice. Because they're always like, if it wasn't for Kong... Mecha Godzilla would have killed Godzilla. It's like, well, if it wasn't for Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla would have killed Kong. <laughs> He'd have killed them both. Kong didn't have any chance against Mecha Godzilla. He didn't have any chance against regular Godzilla. Even even with his axe, he hit Go Godzilla with the axe, and it didn't even leave a scar or anything. It like knocked him out for a couple of seconds, and then it got back up and nearly killed him. 
there was a there was a friend of mine, um, and he's a, he's also a Godzilla guy. He you know at his house he has like his, his entertainment system, and then to the side in like his cabinet he's got all the Godzilla like toys and figures and statues and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he he just was not having it. And he's like, this movie sucks. It's ass. And I I think that I I haven't gotten confirmation, but I'm pretty sure it's because uh, Kong got the 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 finish. The kill. Yeah, I think that's why he's mad. Yeah. I mean, Godzilla was getting his butt kicked (laughs) by Mechagodzilla. But in the article, the director was saying that if he hadn't done all that and came in fresh, he probably would have beat Mechagodzilla on his own. But he had just fought Kong twice. Well, he says three times. He's counting the first fight on the ship. Yep. And blasted a hole to hollow earth, which, I mean, come on, he's, that's a lot of energy being used. So that's what I was literally about to ask you. Has Godzilla's stamina ever come into play in previous movies? Um, in the Japanese ones, mm. not so much. Like, it doesn't seem like it. Like, it always seems like his energy is uh, pretty limitless. Okay. But he does seem to get tired and stuff in these movies like i can i can believe getting punched and kicked and thrown around that'll wear you down but it's you know again going back to the fighting games thing it's like saying that there's a a, a, you can only throw a limited amount of hadoukens before you get tired it's like no those are those are pretty limitless but there is a health bar so you punch them in the face long enough they'll go you know they'll get concussed but throwing uh fireballs and hadoukens around that, that, that doesn't seem to be you know a big issue that's how I, I interpret it well I mean it's all energy that's being used up mm-hmm. so I mean that's also a fighting game they're not gonna give you a limited amount if you were an actual person and you're using your energy to make these you're probably gonna get tired See, this is why uh, the DBZ fan and the Street Fighter fan, they have different points of perspectives. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> Goku wouldn't even need a, a Kamehameha to beat Ryu, so. <laughs> Planet Destroyer barely beats uh, Akuma. <laughs> but he did. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really going to defend Ryu, but <laughs> I'm not, I'm, but I mean, he 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 does what he's got to do. He does. Um, but yeah. Besides, yeah. if you remember the Street Fighter Two animated movie, he only had a power level of three thousand. Is that really? I don't remember that. Yeah, they show that in the beginning. Oh, when one of those robots are scanning him, and I think when he was using a Hadouk and it went up to like thirty-five. Oh, or something like that. Oh, well, yeah. Then how's he going to get over nine thousand? Right. <laughs> can't do it <laughs> um, Ryu, so yeah Ryu could take out Godzilla mm, <laughs> oh, <that. laughs> oh hell did you ever play uh, King of the Monsters from SNK you mean the uh, Super Nintendo game uh think maybe it was ported over i just always remember seeing it in arcades yeah the one where you where it's like uh you're on a map yeah and yeah you're you play like a godzilla like character yeah. yeah yeah i think i had told the story about how um we rented that from blockbuster okay and then we kept it for so long that when my grandfather went down there they just said just pay us what you owe and you can keep the game yeah okay that was yeah because <laughs> yeah. we it was what like a, a week you can only borrow it for like a three days or something like that yeah 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 and yeah. we had it for like five months yeah <laughs> yeah yeah cause it's uh, it used to be three day rentals uh, unless they were like brand brand new games and it was like two days yeah but, um, but anything after that after they got out of that window of a new release then it could be it was up to three days uh, for some of the even, I know for DVDs at least, or for VHS or movies, or whatever, um, if they were kind of older, they would even go up to five days. Yeah. Um, but for the games, it was typically three days, and then after that, yeah, that was late fees. And I think it, they stopped counting after two months. <laughs> so yeah, uh, because at that point, it's basically you've hit the same price as the actual cost of the game or the product. So. 
Yeah. yeah. What are, I, we we reached it <laughs> with that game. So yeah, they just we just basically kept the game, and they my grandpa just paid whatever the late fees were. And I was like, nice. Now we don't have to get rid of it and return it, and we just kept playing it. Yeah, it was one of those, and I think that they that used to be on a couple episodes of Nick Arcade, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone play it. Nick Arcade. Because yeah, they, um, I believe they were using the TurboGrafx-16 version. Ah. Uh. Um, but yeah, I've no one ever picked it, though. It was always an option, and I don't ever remember anyone ever picking it. They would always go for, like, Act Razor instead. I remember they always wanted uh, Act Razor or Toki. Toki was also another one. Um, but yeah, uh, I just, that had me curious. And obviously they couldn't use the actual characters because of, of copyright and all that. But there was definitely the lizard guy. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, how was that game, though? I mean. And then when you smashed certain buildings, power-ups kind of popped out. And I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. The game was fun. I loved that game. I mean, obviously, if we kept it for so long. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, that other than that, the other game I remember playing was Super Godzilla. Was that the one that Angry Video Game Nerd reviewed? I think he reviewed that one. Okay. That was also on Super? Yeah, that was also on Super. Okay. The Actually, the um, suit for Space Godzilla was supposed to be for Super Godzilla because they were going to do a movie where he becomes Super Godzilla but they scrapped it and instead used it as a villain for Space Godzilla you know he became Space Godzilla and Godzilla had to fight him uh, which they explain that by after Biollante was defeated and went up in like his pollen went up into space some of it got stuck into a space crystal and it mutated it into Space Godzilla because Biollante is created using a rose plant uh, the scientist, human's daughter DNA, and Godzilla DNA. So, yeah, that made space Godzilla. Okay. Yeah. Was it the the uh, the the turtle? Wasn't there one where he like radioactive breath did it like all the way up into outer space? And then that's um, how he killed it. Camera. Yeah. Was that it? Was like the, the the he just like blew it all the way up into the atmosphere, or whatever. Uh, well, Gamera usually used fireballs. Okay. Uh, Godzilla did shoot Kaiser Ghidorah up into space. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was Kaiser Ghidorah that Godzilla blew up into space. Okay. Um. You know, the more you're bringing all these examples up, the more I think that it was absolutely absurd that Kong had any chance at all. <laughs> <laughs> that um. is what I keep saying. Why do you think I was all like, if Kong beat wins, I'm just giving up. And and, and I'm going to go even further. I remember when we were watching the movie, and then the, the one random NPC guy's all like, yeah, second round went to Kong. I was like, did it? At, at best, if I was going to be generous, using the fighting game analogy, it looked like he just probably KO'd oh, <laughs> KO him in, like, in between rounds, you know? Like he beat his maybe his first health bar. And yeah. that's being generous because... If you call that a knockdown, Godzilla was up, like, in a couple seconds. Right? It was like he was down, got back up, and then he was ready to fight again. And you gave and you gave the round to, to Kong? I was all like, when... when Every time before, like, the on the ship, when, when Godzilla put Kong down, he put Kong down. And then, in the, obviously, in the third round, he put him down, down. So, I, I don't know. I was like, I don't know if you guys are just trying to be generous or what, but yeah. It's like if you really want to call that, I, I, I think the uh, the countdown in Mike Tyson's Punch Out lasted longer, <laughs> uh, with, with Mario counting out, uh, 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 and then he was back up. I was like, okay, it was like a five count. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, well, second round went to Kong, and I was like, that that's that. Oh, the round's the, not over yet. It's it's the uh, the the Bret Hart, the was it the Montreal or the Toronto screw job, the Montreal screw job. That's yeah. that was. It was all like, uh, what was it? Godzilla's down! What? Go, oh, go, ring the bell, ring the bell! It's like, what? What was that? <laughs> the, the Montreal screw job or whatever. Uh. With Bret Hart. 
So, uh, real quick, what what I was, uh, Vince knew that Brett was going to go, was leaving to WCW. Yeah. And so, and Brett still had the belt. So I think, who did he drop it to? Was it Taker or Shawn Michaels? I think it was Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. And so, uh, the ref was basically instructed to do a quick count, and that's what happened. And then at the end, Bret Hart was like, what the fuck? Like, and that was completely off script. And he was yelling at Vince, and at the time, Vince was the was a ringside commentator yeah. with Jerry, with the king. And so that's when they first realized, oh, Vince is more involved than we thought. Um, and yeah, and that's how that all that all came out. But uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what they did to Godzilla. So like, Godzilla's down. One, two, three. And Godzilla's like, ah. <laughs> what the hell? So you counted that? Like I just fell down. It's like I kicked down. I kicked down. It's like my shoulder was up. Shoulder was up. <laughs> and like I said, the axe didn't even really hurt him. Yeah. He didn't have any like mark on him. Yeah. I didn't cut him. The only time he got cut by the axe was when Kong was like right there and hit him in the leg. <laughs> and then he just pulled it out of his leg and threw it. Yeah. Godzilla zero fucks to give. <laughs> um, did you get a chance to go to to Japantown and see their display? I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it's still up, I might go this weekend. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. You, you should go. You should go check it out. Um, or if it's still up, I gotta go back on uh, the thirteenth to get my second shot. So I might go check it out then. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Besides, I'll be walking around trying to resupply in Pokemon Go. So. <laughs> oh. There you go. Uh. Yeah, it looks like it's still going. Godzilla Invasion, Kino Kuniya, USA. Uh, for a limited time, visit one of our stores for cool Godzilla-themed merch. Uh, get your hands on art books, clear files, stickers, figures, t-shirts, and more. Um, you can also shop online, too. Oh, yeah, see, this is the the uh, Hokusai, the Great Wave. Yeah. And, this, and that's what I was looking at, and I was like, ah, but I was like, no, nah, I like the other one, though, the one that I ended up getting you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tomodachi's. Best friends, Jet Jaguar and Godzilla. Uh, yeah, dude, he looks like a Dollar Tree Ultraman. <laughs> but yeah, so, and then, the, yeah, they had, like, that's the tapestries and all of that. Nice. So, and then, like I said, they had, um, and, and it was all broken up by year. Yeah, so then they had the notepads. So it was, and then there's, like, books and art books and stuff. I didn't really see this at ours in San Francisco. I didn't see that. Uh, but this this one, yes. As a matter of fact, this actually might be San Francisco, or at least it's very... This is what it was. And then down here, it's all broken down by year. Or, like, era, I should say. And so that's why I saw the Mecha Godzilla by the, the 2000. Yeah, and then see the keychains, the rubber straps. Um, oh, yeah, see, so there you go. There you go, yeah. And see, there, there's some more, too. So there was, like, the Ghidorah and all of that, three heads. There's, t uh, like, tapestries and towels and stuff. So there's more, nice. and so and, and I was telling Roman too uh, that I prefer the like keychains or, or trinkets rather than rubber straps because that's just you know that's where I, I grew up with. Uh, and then there's straight just figurines. Nice. I haven't bought a Godzilla figure in a while. Uh, and they also made shirts. I put them on shirts. So they took uh, classic Japanese wood blocks from like Hokusai and all of them and. Murasaki Shikibu and just put Godzilla all over it. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. Oh, you can get your slippers, your sandals. Oh, yeah. So, uh, obviously, I don't know how much of this is actually still there because some of this stuff, I, I don't remember seeing sandals. So, this could have been when it they first when they put it all out. Um. So, I, I can't tell you, but yeah, this is uh, apparently going on still. So, um, yeah. Uh, images from the official Godzilla store and all that, so. Um. Yeah, so that's pretty. So which one is that then? That is Burning Godzilla, from the '95 movie Godzilla vs. Destroya, which is where Godzilla dies. No, not by Destroya. He melts because <laughs> he over overheats oh. from the radiation. Sad movie for yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watching watching your hero uh, disintegrate is never a good thing. No, <laughs> I was always upset about that one because Godzilla didn't actually kill Destroyer. Oh, the the military did, and I was like, why? Why didn't you just have Godzilla do it? Finish him off and then die. 
And I guess there was some explanation where they didn't have the... I guess, uh... It didn't make sense for him to beat Destroyer and then die the, the hero or whatever. Like, what? Why not? <laughs> you could have done it, Toho. You let me down. And every other Godzilla fan. It's funny that you didn't, like, uh, bury the Godzilla toys at that moment. But you still gave him another chance. Oh, well, he didn't lose. Well, I mean, everybody says he lost, but I don't think so because he got more blood out of Destroyer than Destroyer got out of him. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Yeah, no, if you go, if you check it out, definitely uh, post up. Well, I'm sure you'll post up, but yeah. Uh, Kino Kuni is also kind of weird where, you know, they don't like you taking photos. So that's why I didn't take any photos of the displays. They'd be like, yo, what up? I just got you stuff. And I was like, yeah, but there's more over there. Um, yeah. Cool. But uh, they had the, the pencil boards and it was all broken down by year and all that. And that's why I was like, oh, that's Jet Jaguar because I know him because he looks like Ultraman. Because I have a couple guys that play FGO that are also Ultraman fans and oh, all yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Common Rider. So. I don't know. Do you remember? Uh, I think it was in the 90s or, or late 80s where they had that Ultraman series. It was like a U.S. version of it. Or maybe it was more Australian. I remember there being accents. But it wasn't Japanese. I, I remember that they did do uh, Masked Rider, which was w the same kind of format that they were trying to do with Power Rangers, which was uh, Americanize the uh, non-transformed uh, scenes. But then when they actually did the fights, they used the uh, Japanese footage. Uh, and that was literally just called Masked Rider, which is just, you know, common means mask, Masked Rider. So... Um, but yeah, that also like the the story segments were told with like white folk, and then the uh, the fight scenes were all from the Japanese program. That is what I remember. I don't know if that's what you're talking about though. It might be. Cause I remember, uh, was I know one of the monsters was like a giant mantis or something. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there was so many. There was bad, big bad beetle boys, VR troopers. I couldn't keep up. I I didn't last the whole. I didn't last very long with the Sentai scene. Akiba Rangers is pretty good. Yeah, this thing. No. Oh. Okay. Well. Uh, oh, and it was also by Saban, too. Go figure. Master Rider? Same people yeah. that do uh, Power Rangers? Yeah. Wow. Wait, didn't they, they think they had uh, some crossovers before, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Spin-off Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, yeah. That would explain why. So what? Okay, it was Ultraman Towards the Future. Is what it was called. Okay. When was this? When did this air? Uh, nineteen ninety, Australia. Yeah, it was Australian. <laughs> uh, yeah, there were only thirteen episodes. I remember really liking that. I had all the toys and everything. But I also remember thinking, why do these people have accents? <laughs> just reminded me of when they, they they did the first, the very first X Men cartoon, and Wolverine had an Australian accent. Oh yeah. <laughs> what was the name of that one? I... Was it? I don't. I don't think it was. Was it Uncanny X Men? Maybe. Maybe. Um, but yeah. I just remember it was mostly about Kitty Pride. Right, Shadow Cat. Yeah. Yeah. And then they were like, ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Canadian <laughs> with an Australian accent, that's not good. That's not going to fly. No. Uh, but yeah, good times. Uh, but yeah, no, you know, uh, I, like I said, I think I did end up liking Godzilla a bit more than Mortal Kombat. But um, Godzilla was really, did really well too. So uh, what did the guy say? Or the, the director now, he wants to do the, the Gundam movie or whatever? Yeah, I think yeah. is he isn't he doing the Gundam movie? I think so. <laughs> for Netflix though. Yeah, which Netflix had to apologize for misspelling Gundam. Uh <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this this pandering. It's like, you know, this is this I, I you know, this again comes with the territory. They're like <laughs> I feel like it's it's Wayne's World with the with the dude from the arcades. It's like kids know dick. 
They just go and they put money in the in the machine. It's like, you you guys like those video games? Well, here's a video game for you. It's like, you guys like that anime? Here goes a Gundam. It's like, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, uh, I was recommended. Um, was it Earth's uh, or God's Creation Club or whatever? I think that was from last season, right? Oh, yeah, I think I've heard of it. Yeah, apparently that was one that's on my list now. And then uh, on Netflix is Kimono Chikan also. Um, I know that one has uh, Hanai Natsuki. That's uh, Tanjiro. I'm sorry, Gunpachiro. I have to call him by his real name. Gunpachiro. <laughs> like I said, God damn it, that's fucking Kirito. That's Yoshitsugu. And he's, he has, says it with such passion. Gunpachiro! <laughs> <laughs> what do you say three out of five times he gets the name wrong or something like that four out of seven or something like that yeah so, Tanjiro you just said it you said my name shut up Gunpachiro I wasn't talking to you <laughs> oh man oh damn it when Yoshitsugu when he when he sells it he sells it yep uh, so yeah so yeah, maybe by, by the time we, we do the next episode, maybe I'll, uh, we'll have another uh, thing about Demon Slayer. But, uh, but then again, I think we did talk about it already when we did the, the live the watch party. But Yeah, we got, talked about it a bit. Yeah. Um, I got to do my part because you got you to gotta keep the industry alive in this way. Um, the question is, do I take my Nesco or not? <laughs> Why not? This guy with the goatee, he's got his, uh, his Nesco thing. He's like, one ticket, please. Don't you mean two? Oh, no, she's uh, she's under ten. Put him dish! So, demons, demon box, right. box sister. But yeah. Oh, and, and bless Kita Akari, too. Um, they were both in uh, Wata Tenshi as well, so... Ueda Reina does uh, Miyane, Miyane, Miyako. She's the uh, the one that's kind of like socially awkward. And then Kito Akari does uh, her little sister's best friend, the, the little blonde chick. Um, yeah. And then uh, Ueda Reina gets stalked by, uh, by Lynn. So, yeah. Yeah, Ueda Reina plays literally a lowly con. It's pretty funny. But yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just so happy to see the Demon Slayer take off and all of that. And it's, you know, the whole reason why we do this podcast, you know, is all is all the weep shit. And now that people are starting to acknowledge it, it's like great. I didn't think people were actually gonna pay attention though. So now I need to deal with all this, right? Because because now they're gonna you know they're gonna be like, why isn't uh, why 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 isn't there more? Colored people in here. Why? Why are you so mad that Nagataro is uh, is dark skinned? It's like, oh, you dense motherfucker. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Roman's gonna be like, hey, I got my uh, my FGO BP statue, in. and it's like, why didn't you get the tanned one? <laughs> Actually, I do have the tanned one pre-ordered. Yeah, yeah. My my BB is uh, is light skinned. And I just prefer the light skinned version. Hmm. No, the the only tanned version of BB that I like is uh, non Summer Jacks of cosplay. That's nice. Yeah. But yeah, I do like uh, tanned. So. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the tanned. I go with the OG. It comes out in November, I think. That should be plenty of time for me to save up some money. I was worried too because the company that was making it went out of business. <laughs> And I guess Good Smile just decided they were going to pick up the slack and do whatever they were going to have released this year. So they're taking over the production of that one and whatever else they were going to make. It's not like they can't do it. One of the biggest, uh, biggest toy, uh, what figure companies? Mm-hmm. Get that money, right? I would like to, but people aren't buying. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the um, the quintuplets uh, cell phone things? Cause though that's I'm about to go buy those from Good Smile. Just waste my money. 
Uh, what are they like straps? Yeah, well, they're um, so, like suction cup things, but they also they're like little uh, like figurines. So you you put them there, and they have a suction cup because they can hold your cell phone. So that, like you can rest your phone on it like that or like that, and they they go like right there. But yeah, or I guess alternatively, you can put them like I guess on the car as well. <clears throat> so I'd have to see if my uh, supplier gets them. I just gotta type in quintuplets, and it'll come up. I'm sure. Uh, though my issue is, that do I want to get all five? And all, at first, I was gonna get all five, but I'm like, eh, no, I really only want uh, Ichika and Nino, or not Nino. Well, Nino too, and Miku. No, and then it's like, well, I already got three of them. I might as well get all five of them. Keep the sisters together, and it's like, ah, that's how it all. That's how it all begins. It all right. tumbles downhill. Yeah. So, but yeah, trying to be a little smarter with it. I'm only getting like one of each item. Yeah. <laughs> I already got all five Nendoroids, but I only got Miku and Ichika's uh, pop-up parade figures. Yeah. But then uh, I got all five Nendos. That was my compromise. So, But yeah. Cool. Yeah, I got a... The only thing I'm actually trying to order from my people, like, uh, other than, like, what, like if you're asking about something, and I, I could look it up and put it on there for you. But, like, if I'm going through their website, I look to see if it's coming out next year. Or late to this year. The those quintuplet uh, cell phone things are coming out like in September, so it's not even. Uh, it's a quick turnaround. Yeah, yeah. It's so normally you know good smell stuff comes out like uh, half a year later or eight months later. So yeah, but no, the those things are coming out really soon. Um, and speaking of Demon Slayer too, I don't know if you were following the fighting game that's coming out from the the Naruto guys, or was it Cyber Two Connect and the Naruto guys? Uh, but they just announced the uh, those two kids from Tanjiro's training, the the rock kid and the rock sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're gonna get in the game, and I was like, I, I didn't even know they could fight, but okay. So, I mean, I guess they'll die really easily. Yeah, because they both did. Yeah, during the training. Yeah, the, uh, selection. Yeah, and then they they taught Gonpachido how to cut the rock. Yep. So we'll yeah, we'll see. So. Unless you can't cut them because they're ghosts. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how ghosts work in this series. It's not like in One Piece where you can punch a ghost. <laughs> or just push a zombie back underground. Logic. That's what I'd do. Which Luffy did do. Yeah. Luffy. Luffy's on it. <laughs> it, was, it was coming out of the ground. He just walks over and... Pushes it back. <laughs> That's all you need to do, really. Luffy's a, Luffy is ahead of the game. <laughs> uh. Anyway, yeah, I haven't been keeping up with it. Um. I don't really see a whole lot of news about it, really. So yeah. you telling me this is new? new yeah, me. yeah, and that caught me off guard too. But I was like, all right, and and I'm like. Trying to figure because I was like, oh well, maybe if if Way to Reina gets in it, I was like, that'd be nice to see, you know, her getting into a fighting game and Kito Akari getting into a fighting game. That be, I think uh, Nezuko was already like part of the first ones announced. So it's like Tanjiro, Zenitsu, Inosuke, Nezuko, uh, and then uh, Gin. So, yeah, they were like the first batch, uh, and then now they're just kind of like trickling out more and more characters. And the most recent ones were going to be those two. So it's Sabito and uh, whatever her name is. Right. Uh, they have Nendos coming out, and I ordered both of those. So. Yeah, yeah, I saw they were coming out. Yeah, yeah, I got those. Um, yeah. Which, no, it's not even a good show. It's only because it's got a good animation. Yeah. I noticed that most people who complained about that show were FGO fans. Yeah. <laughs> Really? I thought it was the opposite. I thought the reason the show got popular was because of FGO fans. It's because no. of the fate, fate tards, as they call them. Because, uh, from what I've seen, it's because people only know of what well, I call them Ephotable because of Demon Slayer, and then they don't think that anything of Fate and blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, if they're going to discover a company, it might as well be with something that they like and then look into their other stuff. Oh, they're complaining that that's why it got so popular is because they pulled in the fade audience. No. Casuals came in okay. and started watching it okay. and are saying that fade is nothing if Demon Slayer wasn't around. 
It's the opposite. Right. Demon Slayer would be nothing if it wasn't for fate. And, you know, and Ufutav didn't even start with fate, really. They started with Garden of Sinners, with Karanu Kyokai, really. Yeah, so. which I still need to finish. Yeah. <laughs> that was really their first involvement. And then they did, like, Fate Zero, and then from Fate Zero they were like, you know, you guys do a really good job with fate, we're just going to keep calling you. And then, you know, Unlimited Blade works, and then the movies, and blah, 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 and here we are. Yeah. Because they didn't do Apocrypha, they didn't do a Babylonia, they didn't do Camelot, they didn't do Solomon, so they didn't do Grand Carnival. So nope. Uh, they, I don't even know if I want them to do a uh, prototype. I think they should just get Studio Leash, the same guys that are doing Grand Carnival. They should just do prototype because the 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 trailer, the teaser trailer they did was actually the guys from Grand Carnival, and it was like just do that or, or Carnival Phantasm from back in the day, and I was like, really? The 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 spoof parody guys did this and it was super serious yeah, yeah. Just, just have them do the whole series then um but then what did we say they did uh asobi asobase <laughs> i was like oh no they did that one yeah that was them wow um when uh, we were talking about the uh the upcoming fgo event the waiver thing because uh reina as you know what he mean says character it takes on uh sima yi and there's a guy in our FGO chat. He's also like a Dynasty Warriors guy with me. Three Kingdoms, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Yeah. Um, and so he's all, but he's a, good, a huge Zhu Ge Liang fan, Waver, basically. And uh, uh, you know what I mean? I say takes in Sima Yi, who was like the rival to uh, Zhu Ge Liang in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. And he's all like, oh, so am I going to see you on the battlefield? And I was all like, yeah, man, just look for me and my horse. And I put the screen cap of Gudaku sitting on uh, Red Hair's lap from the Grand Carnival. I was like, that's going to be me with my horse. Sounds like Hikaru Midorikawa. So handsome. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we go meta. But, you know, it's, it's you know, only popular because they fold in the Fate fans. Right. <laughs> uh, which is funny because next year uh, Kito Akari joins in the uh, Fate Requiem event when she joins Aris or becomes Aris. So. Fate Requiem. Yeah, that's a light novel. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's with the uh, Voyager. Yeah. Voyager. Okay. But uh, <laughs> we have too many Lolis. We need a Shota. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all uh, it's all coming up. Um, and then on top of that, too, I don't know why they're complaining. Remember, every, like, six or seven months, FGO is dying, man. Right? So, it's like, one. FGO is dead. FGO is dead. Really? <laughs> Looks pretty alive to me. <clears throat> this is one of the, the challenge quest that just ended last night for Gouda Gouda, and I just did it on the first try. I just followed this guy's setup, and I was like, okay. And I would have done it in four turns, too, if it wasn't for these rotten kids. These meddling kids. No, I forgot to I forgot to put in the, the plug suit, uh command uh or mystic code to swap out my uh my characters and so i could have four turned it but instead i ended up uh six turning it so i was like whatever they still did it on my first try so i don't care i'll take that but it's a dead game so who cares yeah godzilla <laughs> right we got a godzilla gotcha game <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude i don't know if you noticed but a lot of gotcha games are just dying right now though uh, star ocean is dead uh, Madurka died, obviously. What was it? the other one that Delight works? The guys that make FGO, the one based off Sakura Tyson is dead. Yeah, they're they're dropping left and right, man. That's why everybody was getting concerned with FGO, and I was like, if anything, Delight works dropping Sakura Tyson to consolidate into FGO actually makes way more sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I'm making this claim, then they go and they release that that new Nero costume and <laughs> set everything on fire, and, and everyone is like looking at me now and I'm like I, I had nothing to do with this how are you getting those anyway do you, if you just have the character you can get it um I mean I, I don't I don't know I haven't even started. the event is, is live right now the event is going on I'm assuming though that if you either buy it out of the event shop or you complete certain uh the missions then you just unlock it it's a spiritron de dress right and then you just you know equip it onto the character you unlock it and equip it right Okay, because I was wondering how you even get them. Like, I, I, I wasn't sure if, if you had the character, yep. it was unlocked for you to get, or if you could just 
get them no matter what. And then when you get the character, just unlock it. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't have the character right now, it'll just sit in your inventory. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then, like, any Spiritron dress, you need to get the character to max level, max ascension, max level, then you need to uh, pay the cost to unlock it, then you can equip it. Okay. But, but yeah, if you don't have, you can still get the costume and it'll just sit there in your inventory. Okay. So, and it'll just say, like, locked. I mean, I really only want a couple of them. Neo, Chris, Mabe, and uh, probably Jan, because they didn't give me Alter. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that, man. Even, in, again, in the FGO chat, when they were all like, man, Steve's Neuro gets everything. And I'm just like, you know, honestly, if I had the call, I would have given it to Jalter or Musashi or Raiko. <laughs> you know, or, or any of them. I would have given it to them, because, uh, you know. I'm, I'm honestly completely okay with the gym outfit <laughs> for Nero. <laughs> so I, I don't really know. And then we get, um, what is it, next year? I think next year we get uh, Nero's uh, third costume. And so it's like, okay. I mean, that's the one based off Extella. So I'm like, that's cool. And I would have been like, that's that's good enough for me. No, I'm going to give me another one. So I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I didn't ask for this, but <laughs> I'll take it. I was hoping for Ishtar. But... They don't care about Ishtar, apparently. I mean, well, was it Ishtar? Yeah, there's three versions of Ishtar, but... Yeah, yeah but she has no... No no costumes, no Spiritron right. dress. No. Well, no, that's not true. Space Ishtar does have a Spiritron dress. Yeah, but not regular Ishtar. No, not regular Ishtar. I don't care about Space Ishtar right now. <laughs> she doesn't come in until later this year, so... Yeah, probably. But, uh, yeah. What a time to be alive. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I actually, and I did, or this morning, I did try for uh, Miss Crane. Nada. 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 Like I said, I got the, in Discord, I got the uh, the five-star CE, which has best goddess. It has uh, uh, worst goddess Arashian, but then it also has best goddess Ishtar, speaking of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was really cute artwork. I don't know who's, who was the artist, but it was really cute. So I was like, I'll take it. If I got the five-star CE, I'm good. Cool. Um, and, and the way I'm going, quite honestly, I think I'm... I might just the next four star ticket we get in JP. I might just get get Nero because it's like I'm getting all this Nero content. I don't have Nero on my JP account because I'm basically I'm trying to avoid characters that I already have or I'm planning on getting on on my main account, my USA account. Right. So it's like, why am I going to double dip? But you know, the Crane, I like her design. Her her voice actress is Ishtarine's mom from Yudu Camp, so it's kind of like sure. Oh. Um, and Yagyu from Senran Kagura, so that's cool. Um, but yeah. So, but other than that, I'm like, I just threw what I had at her, and I didn't get her, so I'm like, all right, well then, I'll, when when we get to this in US, I got spooked though. I got spooked by your waifu. When I said it was a gold caster card, and I was like, no, nah, it's not going to be this easy. And then it was uh, Nito, and I was like, yeah, that's uh, what I expected. So you got better. <laughs> I would have preferred Miss Crane. But the other thing, too, um, is that she... I don't know if you saw, like, Sean's breakdown, or at least his brief breakdown of her steals, but to activate her uh, NP, you need 20 critical stars, and then it swaps her out with the fourth member in your party after she activates her NP. Yeah, it's a lot of, like, 4D chess to use her. And I'm like, I don't... I don't... Without getting, like, a sober Oni level of in-depth analysis i'm like okay because using the wiki sometimes is kind of vague and, and hard to understand so i'm like all the the stuff that for instance the summer three characters i didn't really understand a lot of their gimmicks and now that they all are in english and translated now i'm like oh okay so now i take that knowledge i have in the usa i go to jp and now i just whoop ass with everybody but um I think what I'm going to do is before I start the the event, this current event, is I might go and uh, finish the Japanese uh, Lost Belt, get a couple of uh, quartz, roll again for uh, Miss Crane, fail at that, and then start the event. But yeah. So that's cool. the plan. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think uh, obviously our guy in Discord is going to hate her because she has boobs, but you know, what can you do? <laughs> uh, I also like her because she looks like... Um, K Kanoe from um, Blaze Blue, so uh, that's a that's a thing. So, cool, cool. Um, and again, and her lore, she's the the crane from um, Samurai Showdown, which is you know 
guy helps Crane, and he's she's all like, oh, he's such a nice man, how can I ever repay him? And then one of the Japanese deities is all like, I'm going to make you a woman, and, and then she's all like, cool. And then he like she like goes and hooks up with him, and she like serves him. And then, you know, she's all like, oh, by the way, I'm that crane you saved. He's like, I've been banging a bird. Sweet. <laughs> um, and that's basically, that's the story right there. It's very so. Japanese of him. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, Japanese mythology. It's way better than Greek. Right. Um, but you call him Hydra, I call him Orochi. Same difference. Eight-headed serpent. You know how it goes. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, nice. So we're topical because we just uh, covered all the the current FGO stuff. <clears throat> yes, we did. Um, yeah. Which, uh, About to use my ticket and fail getting a uh, waiver. Waiver? Yeah. Well, remember you get your guaranteed five star ticket next year as well. So. Well, I already have one. Okay. But you know, it's not like an MP2 wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I think. What do I have? Three, I think. Really, the only benefit he gets is that his poison does more damage, or his curse does more damage. That's about it. But if if that's something that you care about, sure. Yeah, not really. Yeah. I, know, I didn't get him. I got a CD. That's. I'm. I'm. On, honestly, I'm waiting for Reynes. So, you know, you know what I mean. I say, Hestia. Yeah. Suya. So. Uh, this is just a serial killer. So. Oh, and then, no, no, and watch, I'm about to get, like, NP5 Luvia. I'm telling you. You know, but knowing me, I'm probably still gonna, I'm gonna get NP4 John, because it's gonna be like, oh, it's a gold ruler, here we go, Luvia. Janu. What? Okay, let's do it again. Alright, oh, it's another gold ruler. Okay, this one's Luvia. John. What? <laughs> so that's just, that's how it goes for me. But yeah. I remember I uh, I used the because we get a a, a four star ticket not too long after this and um, when this happened in JP every the number one pick was Luvia because they did the poll they were like who are you gonna use your ticket on Luvia and so I was one of them and then uh, not too long after that like a couple of banners later I ended I rolled and then I got an NP two Luvia and I was like because she becomes permanent and I was like what the hell <laughs> so. So she's going to be in the uh, rotation no matter what. Yeah, she's permanent. She's permanent in the pool. Reyna's is not. So you know what Mina say is not. But uh, Luvia will be permanent. So, And uh, I, I was actually uh, shocked to find out that Shizuka Ito, her voice actress, the oh, 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 is a uh, household husband's wife. That's Miku. Miku! Uh, that's her. And I was like, no way. I was like, yeah, that's her. I was like, oh, wow. So... Miku, don't have my chest. No, it'll hit you. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Kill that cockroach. It's a good show. It is. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> it all ties in. <laughs> I guess my last question for you is, uh, are we uh, fans of Blue Oyster Cult's Go Go Godzilla? Stomping around Tokyo? I am actually. I got that song on my MP3 player. <laughs> I haven't listened to the remake by Wester Takian or whatever his name is mm. from uh, that one band. That one band? Yeah. Mm. That I can't remember the name too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> that's it that's all that, that's all i got that's all you got that's all i got so uh yeah well uh, i guess household husband live action cool yeah all right that's gonna be the next hopefully the next one if we can get it yeah yeah all i got i got how about you do that it's on netflix so <coughs> you can find it on a, if not we'll think of something else but for now that's what we got planned excellent uh so uh yeah all right. Hope you all enjoyed this episode. <laughs> Lots of ranting. Next time, hopefully, Sakyo will, will be back with us. But uh, yeah, we wish her the best. Right for right now, while she's dealing with her stuff. But yeah, yeah. We still appreciate her, and she's hanging out in Discord as well. So yes, yeah, she is. All right. So we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Bye. <laughs>